God, the force just reawakened. That was even worse than I thought it was. From a nap, be. I did a yawn. To, you could see it was a nap. Yeah. We just do you think? Do you think it'll, they'll pick up the yawn? It'll be that'll be clear mm. one. <laughs> that'll be clear. Mm. Yeah. Oh, what a good force! No, shut up. Ding. All right. All right. I had a All good right. night's right. force. All right. I, I'm David Sims. I'm Griffin Newman. Welcome okay. to Blank Check. You, we're calling ourselves Blank Check now. I think this is the moment, right? Gr- you did tell me that this was the day we had to decide. Ben. 2016. It's true. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Today is the day to decide. So I'm, our, I'm our podcast is called Griffin and David Presents, but that's a stupid name. I'm explaining to our guests who haven't introduced sure. yet. So we're going to call it Blank Check from now on. Blank Check with yeah. Griffin and David, colon, oh, and then Jesus. what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Blank Check with Griffin and David, colon, presents, colon. <laughs> <laughs> this is The Force Reawakens. M-dash. Yeah, okay, yeah. I know we had said we were done with We've with talked the over and over about how we're never going to talk about Star Wars again. we got to do it one more time. Yeah. This is the bridging episode. Okay. This is a new podcast. This isn't a new podcast. We've already done that. It's a new year. This is, a, this is not, quote, unquote, a new podcast. All this right. is a podcast that is new. Mm-hmm. Blank check with Griffin David, whole new ball game. Still talking about the same thing that we talked about for the last nine months, but this is the last time. Someone, a good friend of mine, sent me a link to like another Star Wars podcast. I was like, I've been really enjoying this. You might like this, and I just wanted like, I never want to listen to a Star yeah. Wars podcast ever yeah. again. Yeah, uh, we have a guest. We should introduce. We should her. introduce our guest because uh, this is a guest we've been trying to get on for a very long time. Yeah, in that I uh, texted her once, and then she never replied to me. Uh, totally wait, I would it. love to hear this other <laughs> side of the story where you guys have been, like, tracking me down and, like, wrangling my I, schedule. I totally texted her one time. We've been <laughs> trying to wrangle her for years. Okay, so here's my side of the story. It makes me sound great. Like, yeah, yeah, it makes I, you sound very, very busy. Uh, very, very busy. Yeah. Here's my side of the story. Oh, okay. On several occasions, we didn't have a guest. Yeah, Griffin always does the guest because I'm, you know, lazy. I b- I, yes. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> boy. boy. Ooh. No, but this is maybe. Let's not mince words. <laughs> this is maybe the first guest that you yourself have booked, correct? Yeah. I like from start to finish booked this guest. Right. You, you have booked friends of mine on this but show. But I was the one who But you were the one who booked them. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, I got Sonia and, and, and Pilot. Pilot, and yeah, all, yes. all my, my, my two friends. <laughs> Your two friends. <laughs> Sonia and Pilot. Yeah. And here's my third friend Emily Yoshida. Uh, Emily Yoshida. Hello. Of The Verge. Editor. Entertainment editor of I'm the, the Verge. entertainment editor at the Verge. Podcast com. superstar. Uh, Her podcast is the only podcast that ever your... moved me to tears. Really, really? Yeah, your farewell episode, uh, girls in hoodies. Uh, well, girl it moved me to hoodies. tears too. I uh, I had to pull over for a second. I was driving <laughs> down Fort Hamilton Parkway in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, I got a little overwhelmed, and I was like, "Oh, this is really sad." And then I pulled over, and I just took a second, and then I started driving again. Uh, very early on, when we started, I never told you that. I think so. Yeah. I mean, it was an emotional time. Yes. A lot of tears sort of bleeding together. Yes. Uh, very early on in the history of our podcast, Emily, mm-hmm. uh, David told me that you you had listened mm-hmm. and was like, oh, that's cool. She, like, listened to or our podcast. Or was aware of our podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I listened. I've, lis- I've listened, to listened to this podcast. Listen, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> listen. Uh, months and months ago. Sure. And I was and like, uh, well, I had exchanged texts with Emily a while mm-hmm. back about the fact that she had written – Phantom Menace. Well, that you were a big Phantom Menace fan before it came out. Before it came out. Yeah. Okay. okay. You were very anticipate. Think, you know, you're very excited for it. I mean, that's a very that's a very marked phenomenon. There are li- people who uh, know a lot about Phantom Menace. There was such a buildup. There was a. Year, I mean, the same way that we know a lot about Force Awakens. I remember but... my dad coming home with like the Vanity Fair. You know, with oh, the yeah, and yeah. would spread and all that stuff. Jar Jar Did you get all the premiere, the, the premiere covers. With uh, all the yes. Different... Hmm. Anyway, so we talked about how you had been really into Phantom Menace, and you bragged openly about how you had written fan fiction in advance of the Phantom Menace's release about the Phantom Menace, right? I'm pretty sure. I mean, I was I went back on the Wayback Machine to find out where that. Oh, stuff it's was. online. It's on the internet. Oh snap! You found it. I found it. Was it under a nom de plume or under? It's under a nom de plume. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Can you tell us your nom de plume or is that anonymous? I wish I could because it's so good. J.K. Rowling. But I but really, really don't. You'll it tell us off anybody. Mike. Of course not. Okay. To find it. <laughs> uh, can you tell us? Because I'm. Could I'm you a... remove it or is it just? It's like too buried in the deep web. I think web. it's pretty buried, and in a way, I'm kind of proud of it, and I'm proud of the community. That it was a part of, sure, because it was a very like prototypical online female Star Wars fan community, no. which might narrow it down for people who are around. Yeah, then. in 1999, yeah, so yeah. there can't have been a ton of those. No, there were not a whole lot. But um, so I, I, I was glad to have been on that scene, on that uh, 
message board. And this is like one of your initial paw prints online. Like yeah, we've all got yeah. those. Yeah. Right? The sort of early scratchings we made on the internet. Definitely the first like message board where I had people that I knew online that were like friends. Right. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you know this, Emily, but I, I am quite the connoisseur of fan fiction. Yeah, uh, we've done, we've done, we did a whole fan fiction <laughs> episode once where Griffin ooh, read a lot yeah. of gross fan fiction. Um, now, what, what nature was your <laughs> fan fiction of? What, which characters were they about? What kind of activities were they engaged in? Um, well, a lot of my fanfic featured Obi Wan Kenobi, mm-hmm. um, aka uh, Ewan McGregor. Kenobi, no, right? no, no, that's Liam Neeson. No, what are you talking about? What are you I'm, talking about? My brain about? is exploding. What Qui-Gon what Jinn. I heard Qui Gon Jinn. Am I on right now? I heard Qui Gon Jinn because I want to hear Qui Gon Jinn. What is the matter Jinn. with you? I'm sorry. Obi Wan Kenobi, no. starring you and McGregor, as young, like, yeah. sort of. I mean, how well, old is he? Like, twenty years old. Twenty-seven yeah. years old when that is filmed. Right. Wow. He's very aware of the age difference at the time. Oh, between you and him. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Had um, you seen you in other things? Because he'd been quite mm-hmm. an adult, uh, quite a grown-up movie actor. He was actor. a very, yeah, he was a grown-up movie actor. <laughs> I think as soon as I knew, as soon as I saw the first picture of him and I was like, oh, I have a crush on this man. Sure. I went and watched the rest, like most of his filmography before. Wow. Phantom Menace came out. <laughs> Pillow Book? I did not watch Pillow Book. <laughs> I have not seen Pillow Book. I was I, a little bit, I was a little bit scared of Pillow Book. But now that, that would make me think of just how like Recently, um, there was that cover, that cover story. This is a huge digression. This uh, this cover story on uh, Five Seconds of Summer on sure, Rolling they, Stone, they, and they talked about you know in, in explicit the detail about their uh, they're, they're not a boy band. They oh, are course, a, they are a, 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 a trio or I know yeah quartet quartet of a, gentlemen a band of boys one could say yeah with <laughs> with, with, boy with, band, but... with they play instruments and write catchy right. tunes. But anyway, they were very explicit about their. They're sexual activities. Band. Oh, oh, shit! In uh, they in, do some pillow book shit. They're well, writing. They're I writing mean, calligraphy on each other. But they and are stuff. not. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> what happens in the calligraphy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, but I, I, you know, there were so many fans who were just like shocked to have this sudden sexualization of their idols. Like you know, because that's why you know idols like this are safe, is that they're not sexualized. Yeah, and so. you can project much milder yeah. things onto them. But you know, I saw I saw train spotting. Like I mean, <laughs> I, saw, I was going to say because I remember I, I was, saw some silhouetted shit like. <laughs> Can I say shit on this podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah. you can say oh, whatever yeah. you want. Right. Um, uh, I remember I was really into trains when I was a kid. Like, <laughs> like I really into trains. You were going like, to say Irving Welsh. I was like, really into <laughs> Irving Welsh, yeah. I, I, lo- I, I loved Scottish dialect novels. No. And, like, you know, I was, like, I, I grew up in New York and then we moved to London. But in New York, like, taking taking David on the train was, like, a th- that was, like, what I wanted to do. I wanted to, mm-hmm. like, ride the J train. Oh, Even, yeah. And it was like 1991, so my parents were like, "How did we have this kid who makes us ride these <laughs> like extremely scary trains?" The J train and of all trains. I, every, and well, any train I hadn't been on, I wanted to go on it. Did you ever get in a Z? Yeah, I've been on a Z. The mythic Z train. Yeah, I've been, been on, on the Z. Z. There's four each way. I could anyway. It doesn't matter. So I really liked uh, train spotting. Uh huh. And I mean, it's so, not I mean, that much no, about no, trains. No, I'm sorry. Know? I was. I, I really <laughs> like trains, and I remember I saw the poster for Train Spotting and said to my mom, "Like, what's that movie? Is it about trains?" And I'm like, "That was 10 or 11." She was like, "No, it's about drugs." And I was like, "What are drugs?" Like, I, you know, suddenly a lot of oh, conversations wow. had to be had all at once, just That's because all. of your love of trains. Yes, I was like, "Well, why can't I see this movie about <laughs> trains?" And she's like, "It's there's actually like I don't think there's any trains in it." But it, but anyway. Train spotting. I saw uh, Life Less Ordinary, sure. Shallow Grave, like all those Danny Boyle films. Um, He's but, so good in Shallow Grave. Yeah. Oh God. Oh my God. I, I have to. I, I don't really have an active crush on in, him anymore, but it's still that like first really really big movie star crush that I ever had. Mm, that's I think. fair. Um, Winona Ryder for uh, the both yeah. of us. Oh, yeah. that was our real bonding point. Yeah. yeah Someone yeah. pointed out on Twitter that that was her first crush. That we had both tweeted about her and was like, hey, are you guys friends? <laughs> and then we met up at a bar. Also, like, are you both like males this. between the age yeah, no of, shit. like, it's not that crazy. through 40 or well, something? We both said Beetlejuice specifically, but even then, that's not yeah. so crazy. Yeah, we said yeah. grown-up Lydia Dietz was, like, our dream woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think I said grown-up Lydia Dietz. Oh, I, I was say a that. kid. Her and Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor was my other first celebrity crush. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. really obsessed with the Nothing Compares to You video because it is oh, yeah, yeah, intense. I was uh, I was all about Femke Jensen and X Men. <laughs> sure, she's yeah, yeah she's cool. cute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, she's cool. Like I, I I remember thinking she was really interesting at the time. Yeah. And it's you know what? Actually, the movie actually does a pretty good job not making her lame and not squeezing her any into any dorky outfit. Like yeah. She wears like yeah. pretty boring clothes, and yeah. then she wears that sort of 
leather thing that they They're all zipped wear. Zipped up. They don't do the no. Dumb, so say, like, like she, yeah, 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 she's just kind of one of the one of the gang. Yeah. I mean, all her powers are up here, so she doesn't really need a whole yeah. lot of mobility or anything. Right. Or her, like her problem is her power has never been very exciting to yeah. represent visually. But whatever, <laughs> you know, she closes a door at one point. I think you know she does some stuff. Loved it. Love her. Famke <laughs> Jansen. Famke Jansen. Um, should I? Should I? Do you need to know anything more about this fanfic other than that oh, it was? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, was yes, Obi Wan yes, centric, Obi-Wan, yes. and it always featured a, a new character. Oh, that, see, I think this is a perfect segue. Right, okay, yeah. Here we go. Right? Uh, here we go. That well, well, no, no. Now there were two. Okay. So one was a fellow Padawan, um, okay. working alongside Obi Wan as he's training Anakin. Do you remember the character's oh, name? Oh, wow. So you were setting it post Phantom Menace. Yeah, yeah. So even though Phantom Menace hadn't come out yet. <laughs> wow. So you just knew where Phantom Menace I was going to end up. I, yeah, yeah, I mean, All like, right. I think you, y- yeah. Because I don't even remember. I, 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 I've gone back. I, I've, I've gone back and read it recently, but I never make it all the way to the end because I just cannot physically. <laughs> it's so excruciating. It's just a defense mechanism kind of yeah. locks your joints up. And just, yeah, yeah. Um, but... You know, and that's that's very so that one that one was very much in the what they call a Mary Sue mold. Although sure. she wasn't like exceptionally talented, she was just like a person hanging out. But she um, was she a Jedi? Yeah, right. Yeah. She was a fellow. Right. Yeah, but she was like not super special. Did there, she... But there was a Sith, a female Sith though that was super oh. special in it. Um, and they fought each other. Uh, what was her name? <laughs> yeah, are you going to tell us the names, or do you want to keep those secret? Oh man. I don't know. Can you if so? If you Google something that's in the Wayback Machine, <laughs> just do my homework here real, real quick. Um, does it does it turn up, or do you have to be on the? Do you have to be on I the think way? you have to go in the Wayback Machine. I think it would be you really can't hard Google to find anything. it. You can't do that. You have to be friends with Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Hey now, Mr. Peabody and Sherman. <laughs> You use boy, the Wayback oh Machine. That's yeah. the, I've never seen that show. I oh really? I was actually yeah. Yeah. I was actually watching some of it on YouTube not that long ago because I just like. It came up somewhere, and then I started watching. I was like, "Oh, we still have the show." And I was a kid. It's very, very cute. Did you see the movie? No, no. Yeah. But I think because I was reading that people said it didn't suck. I think it I was heard it was the okay. That Peanuts movie came out, and they're like, "Oh, this doesn't suck." It's sort of like much like Mr. Peabody. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're but like the Peanuts that. movie's only accomplishment was not sucking. Like it wasn't yeah. exactly like good. Yeah, it like aggressively doesn't suck. Right. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> all right, guys. Positive yeah. qualities. You know, at no point does anyone break out into like an impromptu like. Whip and nay nay or whatever you right. know like there's nothing like that's just so excruciatingly off. The well, trailer although, really makes it seem like that's where it, it does. goes. Yes. You know, it yeah. seems like there it's going to be about like there's a big concert and they all need to yeah. anyway. Well, the thing I hate in the Peanuts movie, I tweeted about this, but that at the end credits the song. There's an original song by, by Megan Trainor that goes Trainor. like, "Oh my God, I love being alive," <laughs> and that's like the opposite of what Peanuts <laughs> is about. Peanuts <laughs> is this boy wake up every morning being like, "I don't well, know." Did if you I can read do that interview anymore. though with her? The, 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 the with Megan did you read the Megan Trainor interview about Peanuts? Is very off topic, but. Uh, she gave this interview that was obviously, which is Slate, I think. Yes. It was obviously just, you know, PR person right, was like, right. please talk to Megan Trader. And she was like, I love Peanuts. My mom had it on TV all the time when I was a kid. And everyone was like, what the fuck are you <laughs> Like, we had what on all the time? Like, the four specials? Like, what do you mean? There was a, <laughs> there was a Peanuts channel. There was a channel. lot. Was a lot. Was a lot. It, it seemed like she wasn't maybe totally she sure what Peanuts Garfield? was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was pretty yeah. good. Uh, yeah. I love Peanuts. I watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade every year. <laughs> Like her entire idea is just, oh, that balloon, he's my favorite balloon of all time. <laughs> Remember those insurance commercials? Love yeah, right. Those. I love Peanuts the dog. Oh, from yeah. Peanuts. I'm such a MetLife fan. <laughs> <laughs> now, you might be asking yourself. What the hell is going on? That that whiskey burn baritone I just heard. Oh, here we go. Oh, jumping in with the insurance commercial. He's sitting voice. with us. Yeah, it's weird. It's it's off. I don't like it at I know. all. They've restructured the UCB studios, the actual studio that we record in. That's right. So Ben is going to at some point be in a separate room like it's a recording studio looking at us through a window. But for mm-hmm. now, there is no window. <laughs> nope. So Ben set the levels and then it's just sitting down with us like a person. Yeah. You know, on a mic. It's, it's can't, can't distract himself with equipment. I don't know what to do with you myself. You can't be like looking up random like YouTube videos and like pop up ads <laughs> or that whatever I'm doing. Me, whatever normally. the hell you're doing. <laughs> <We're> loudly sighing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still do that. Yeah, yeah, getting mad at us when we won't stop talking about Star Wars. Yeah, our job, our <laughs> ostensible job, Benjamin. That's true. Uh, that of course is producer Benjamin, aka producer Ben, yeah. aka the Ben Deucer, it's aka producer Ben, hey, aka the Haas, aka Mr. Positive, aka Hello Fennel, aka Birthday Benny, aka we have the a lot of names for him, wow. aka the Peeper, mm. aka. Uh, Ben Kenobi. Or ben Kenobi. Producer I don't ben think Kenobi. we forgot another one. Right. Right. The peeper, you got the peeper. I got the peeper. Right. Of course, I never forget the peeper. Okay, all right. Is um, there an, is there a new Ben? 
scene is there's a new Ben in Star Wars now. There's a new Ben in Star Wars. It's true, Ben. What did you make of that? Your name is shouted very loudly and dramatically in this film. Yeah. Well, and he was obviously named after Ben Kenobi. Right, which is a little weird. It is. It's not like Han Solo and Obi-Wan like are like best pals. Yeah. Although Leia and Obi-Wan, he was sure, her only hope. That's true. Yeah. Mm. But even that seems to be more of a correspondence Agreed. relationship. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. To tell you honestly, like, when I heard the name, we know. <laughs> when I heard the name, I was excited. You, like, yeah, you, yes. you got a little bad guy. I my was actually name, also excited yeah. just because it wasn't dorky. Yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, Ben, that's fine. Yeah. That's a fine name. Um, we should we should, we should add Kylo Ben to the list though. Kylo, Kylo Ben, ben. Yeah. cool, good job. Um, so uh, Ben, at the time that we recorded our original Force Awakens episode, had not seen the Force Awakens. Sure, yeah. Um, this is about three weeks have passed. Mm. Since the movie so came out, since I saw you, I know it's it actually so sucked to it's not actually, see you. I, I was actually like, I'm not trying to blow up your spot, but if, if I got four different text messages from David that just said I miss you <laughs> over the last three weeks. That is true. That is true. That's very sweet. We're really, really good him. friends. <laughs> I was pretty bored. I was pretty bored. Yeah, I was dog sitting most of that time. Um, uh, writing original songs for my parents' dog. We could have gone to see Joy and clowned on it. Oh, I already clown saw it. it on my own. Yeah. Did you have you seen Joy Emily? No. It's a real piece of shit. I've been <laughs> I think there's one good act. I'd say there's yeah, one there good act. One, good act. one it's really crazy. Strong it's act. so bad. And then the QVC stuff happens. And you're like, ooh, good that's movie. Cool. That's this the is stuff that looks movie. great in the trailer. That's yeah. what I'm excited and about. And I gotta say this, and then they just as quickly say, take another left I'm, turn into yeah. another oh, stupid into act. Into a worse thing. Yeah. Maybe. Now how how okay we're talking about Joy. Come on. The thing that I was not expecting, and I have not seen it. Have you seen Joy yet, Ben? No, I have a question though. You might want to step out of the studio and then come back. Uh, no, I don't plan on I, seeing it. I just want to know if they refer to microwaves as future ovens. They don't. No. They don't. They don't. Science safe. oven, I believe, Good. is how she that calls it. That was so it. distracting. Wait, what, what's That's your a question? Mad Men number? thing. Science oven, isn't it? Don't no, no, it's what a... Jennifer Lawrence says in uh, uh, American, American Hustle. Oh, that's right. Stay away yeah. from the science oven the or whatever. I forget. Oven. American Hustle. Um, Hustle. Uh, oh, that's the other one. From the anecdote I was telling you before about being a jerk at the movie theater, that's the other oh, yeah. movie theater. That, that you the complained other... about yep. the projection? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was American Hustle. Uh, we can get back to that later. We'll but I have a question that. about Joy, sure. which is that I was expecting the main problem with this movie to be that uh, how could you possibly believe that cherubic-faced Jennifer yeah. Lawrence is a struggling mother of two? Does mm-hmm. she have two kids mm-hmm. in it? She has two um, kids. Divorce. And Divorce. then everybody's like, everybody's like, oh, she's the best part of it. Like, No, she's not. Okay. That is an outrageous lie. She's, she's terribly miscast. She's very miscast. I would I say she acquits herself pretty well considering how horribly miscast she is. Well, that was the problem with Silver Linings Playbook, but I yes. still feel like she overcame that in a way. She's yeah. good in that movie. I would agree. Um, but this just seemed like a bridge too far. Griffin, how could you possibly think she's good in this movie? It is such a disaster. This movie. I think no. the movie's not good. No. I think she does a really good job. Oh I, I file all three Jennifer Lawrence, David O. Russell performances under one category, which is like good. the best school play performances I've ever seen. Because in oh, no way is she believable. Shade. No, but this is why it isn't backhanded. Because in all three, she's playing someone who should be played by someone a decade older sure. than her. Yes. Yeah. She is very young. She has this energy to her. You never buy her as being older than her years. But no. she's very but present. Like, right. And if you saw like a 15-year-old giving that performance in a school play, you're like, well, obviously she's not a dad, but you know, they right. got to cast a dad. This so isn't a Eliza Doolittle. And you but, accept that uh, she's a dad. You but know? isn't that just like depressing enough yes. To, yes. To, to, to kind of take you out of it a little yes, bit? Yes, but I think the they're real... good pieces of acting. It's just annoying. Knowing that the movies make her do that. She makes no sense as, like, a Long Island gal. And, like, Agreed. this is a character who's supposed to be, like, a real Long Island gal. It, the whole movie makes no fucking sense the at all. acts really great. Well, it's the weirdest thing, because I'm not a Bradley Cooper fan, yeah. per se, but he really does. He's That's like a what, spark plug. Yeah, I've heard that he brings energy back into it. Which, don't they hate each other? Doesn't that not make any sense? Maybe that's part J-Law of it. J-Law and B. Coops, they don't like each other? I heard that. Wow. I keep up on my But gossip. they've made like four movies. Good yeah. lord. Although she did recently say that she just filmed her first sex scene. She was giving this interview about like, Chrissy Pratt. oh, it was super awkward. I was doing my first sex scene with Chris Pratt in upcoming movie Passengers. And everyone was like, you have, like, a bunch of sex scenes with Bradley Cooper and Serena. Did you just forget that movie existed? Or are you just trying to, like, ignore that movie? Maybe she's never seen Serena. Possible. (laughs) I mean, I assume she filmed these scenes. Maybe she didn't. Maybe there was a double involved. I don't know. But, but David, as an actor, I mean, you don't even have those memories because you just go into a trance. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Griffin is the only uh, working actor here. Griffin (laughs) Griffin, Griffin knows. Um, Um, Watch out. This is the year of vinyl. This is the year of vinyl. Griffin's in vinyl. February 14th. We can plug Valentine's Day. Yeah. Uh, what do you do in vinyl? 
I get yelled at. <laughs> by Ray Romano or by uh, Bobby Cannavale? By Cannavale, mostly. Yeah. I pretty much get yelled at once an episode. Once an episode, I say something stupid, and then he yells at me and goes, like, Shut the fuck up. Is whatever. he really nice in he's the person? Nicest guy I heard he's the nicest told me man a lot in the great whole Bobby world. Stories. I have a really big crush on him. Yeah. I kind yeah. of do, too. Also, Not he's in, in a functional way, but. He's in maybe the number one like celebrity relationship that I'm into right oh, now. Yeah, yeah, like, maybe number one. I can't think of a challenger. 100%. Right? Yeah. Isn't there a challenger? They're also just such luscious. It's really adorable. It's yeah. like usually you'd, you'd see a couple like that. You'd be like, oh, they're doomed. Like, whatever. They're enabling each other. But like, I don't know. They look really happy. <laughs> they they look really, great. They're having a good time. <laughs> they seem like they're having a great time. Are they married? No. They're just dating. I thought that yes. they were married. I'm pretty sure not. Somebody look this up. Um, What are we talking about? This is a podcast about Star Wars. <laughs> yep. It's almost well, been probably about 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, I'm having a whatever. great time, though. Oh, yeah. He was married to Jenny Lumet yeah. for nine years? Yeah, he had a kid with her. Who? Uh, he's an actor now. He no, was. They in... are not married, Emily. They are just partners. Oh, that's why it's working, you know? Might yeah. be. Might be. <laughs> Emily Yoshida, anti-marriage. <laughs> uh, their son, Jake Cannavale, mm. uh, was on Broadway in the Larry David play. On uh, Fish in the Dark. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he's an actor now. There you go. And he was a PA on the pilot for vinyl. <laughs> I mean, he, you know. And now he's already leapfrogged. You here. never know. Yeah, <laughs> like, now he's doing much better. He was the PA on the pilot of vinyl, he and now he's already he helped, passed he, he told Tommy which van to get into <laughs> on the pilot, and now he's on Broadway. All right, Star Wars. Star or Wars. Do we have anything? Oh, Joy. Joy, I mean, I actually like, would love to talk a lot about Joy. I know we can't. It's a really weird movie. It's fascinating. Here's the thing that's interesting about the fact that like the movie comes alive when Bradley Cooper enters it. Bradley Cooper is almost giving a perversely low energy performance. Like his entire mm. take on the character yeah. is be as calm and low key as possible, and a lot of pauses, and draw in attention by the fact pauses. that you're not grandstanding at all. But he's like a caged animal. Yeah, you just can't keep well, the can't. Groups. Yeah, it's yeah. really yeah. true. Yeah. And, and them it, eyes, it's bro. The only them time, eyes. It's the only time she has chemistry with a character, correct? Including like Robert De Niro, correct? Like, and uh, like there's this. Oh my it's are all those lines that are in the, the commercials where they're like, something's got to change? Like, are those actually in the movie? Because they sound like things that they were recorded I, for an ad. I'm Joy, by the way, is not in the movie, which was okay. like the only line in the first Joy trailer. Right, much. right. Uh, after, after she pumps the shotgun. Yeah, after she shoots the shotgun. Well, she does do that in the movie. The movie. Completely yeah. bizarre part of the movie. I mean, to me, Joy is like, there, here's the movie where it's like, guys, can we all admit to each other you all need to move on? Like, J-Law, stop yeah. making yeah, movies yeah, yeah, with David yeah. O. Russell and yeah. with these guys. Go make a movie that's not where you're playing a 40-year-old. Yeah. Like, uh, David O. Russell, like, what the fuck is the matter with you? Yeah. Like, you're, you, too many famous people are in your movies. Yep. Mm-hmm. You got it. Come on. Flirting with Disaster, one of the greatest comedies of the 90s. Well, you know who like, doesn't? Like, go back to the magic, baby. Do you know who doesn't need to be in Joy? Isabella Rossellini. But you know what? Yeah. I actually loved her, though. She it's was like fun. like buried lead in but that like, movie. Stuff like that. Like Virginia Madsen. She's in it like, like a lot. She has a like lot. a significant role. Wow. And she has this one scene where she uh, she's like, I will ask you the four questions of a business. And you're like, oh, what, what is What are you talking about? Um, can we talk about a movie that I've seen? Star Wars yeah, The Force Awakens. Sorry, okay. absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so, so, sorry. so uh, Thanks, guys. A blank check, colon, with David, Griffin oh, David, Jesus colon, uh, presents, colon, The Force Reawakens. This is a podcast. About uh, uh, passion projects, right? Yeah, now, well, even forward, our podcast is about passion projects. That's what the podcast and is. The, so podcast the podcast is itself a passion project. And it, it, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's where we get the name Blank Check from. You know, mm-hmm. it's like Blank Check movies. Someone's mm-hmm. given Blank Check to yeah. do whatever they want. Or right. like the cocktail napkin uh, pitch thing, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah. Just passion. Just, exactly. And trust. Right. Massive amounts of trust. Uh, perhaps trust. too much. Yeah. Trust is <laughs> hand while we say this so we can show how much we trust each other. Huge so, trust. So we thought we were... <laughs> we're doing we, trust falls. Uh, doing trust earlier. falls. We, we thought we had closed the book on Star Wars. But A, I've seen it an additional time since then. You've seen it two more times. I've seen it two more times. Uh, ben had not seen it at the time of our Ben, recording. you saw it. I did you see it. You saw it just the one time. Yeah. No, Emily's just, seen it twice. Emily's a fresh new voice we've never had so, on the podcast before. It's a total of eight times... And I oh, think, wow. you know, there's okay. certain regular segments that we've done when addressing other Star Wars movies, like performance review yeah, and going over the billing review. order we didn't get to last time. We want to see how our thoughts have settled now that time has passed. And also, more than anything, I feel like there's a lot to talk about uh, culturally what has yeah, happened. Yeah, the reaction this to this movie. Because as of today. Oh, right, that was the segue I was going to do. I yeah. forgot about that. But we're recording today on a Tuesday, this episode, or Wednesday. This episode will come out next Monday. But on today, Wednesday, January 6th. The Force Awakens officially became the highest grossing film in yeah. U.S. domestic box office history. Yeah. It beat Avatar. Yeah. Today is the day. In in beat Avatar, like, in, in three weeks or whatever, which is 20 days. 20 days. Something. Yeah, which right. is insane. It took Pretty Avatar, cool. uh, I think I read 318 days to hit wow. 760. Sure. 
and Force Awakens Avatar. is hitting twenty. It's probably going to be the first movie to make a billion dollars in one country. You think it's going to make a billion dollars? I think it is. Wow. I think it. I mean, last weekend it did ninety. No, I know. It's I know. at seven. But you know, now. like Kevin Hart, you're right along twos around. I know. I think, but at the very least, it's it's a question about whether it ends up at nine hundred or a billion. Okay. Somewhere anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't anyway, matter. I want to talk about all this? But first, I think, did you have the the segue you wanted to do? Oh well, you you stuff? wrote a Mary Sue into your freaking fan fiction. Oh here. yeah, I mean that was. I feel like that's several controversies ago now, though. It's uh, true. <laughs> it was kind of a bummer that it was the initial react, yeah. like the first week of Star Wars was like eighty percent people just saying like it was good or like it's yeah. a lot like the first movie or. People being like, well, Ray's skills are never explained adequately or, you know, whatever. This sort of right. like, mini controversy that erupted. I just think it's a bummer that our our culture spent like a week seriously debating a point brought up by Max Landis. Who you once got uh, into an argument with at a party. And then was forced to kiss at the same party. Have I told you this part of the story? You didn't story? tell me that part of the story. I got into an argument with him. We have like mutual friends. I met him once. I got into an argument with him about whether or not Iron Man 3 all took place on one day, it which it does, does not. not, empirically does Iron not. Iron Man 3? Yeah. Iron Man no. 3 takes place over several days. This the sun rises argument. and sets. His argument was the film is sloppy because it all takes place on Christmas, yet the sun rises and sets several times and it's still supposed to be on Christmas. And I said that's because it isn't all supposed to take place on Christmas. <laughs> it takes place in the Christmas season. Yeah, it's a Christmas and, movie. And he goes, watch it again. And I was like, no. We were like <laughs> fighting about this. And everyone was like, oh my God, look, it's like our two friends who are like movie nerds and get into like serious conversations at parties. Because I guess we're both the people who go to parties where everyone else is trying to be chill and like and, get yeah. passionate about dumb whether or not Iron Man is celebrating Christmas once or five times. <laughs> like, that's what we're arguing over. And they were like, you guys should kiss and make up. And he was like, yeah, I'll do it. I don't care. And I was like, well, I'm not going to now not kiss him and look like You're right. I lose. <laughs> so I kissed Mas- Max Landis. I'm pretty, sorry. That's a bummer. At a party yeah. after he made yeah, one of my wrong. favorite Iron Man movies. It's the best Iron Man movie. It's the only one I Wait, you guys like. are insane. It's the best Iron hey, Man movie. We'll have you back on as a guest when we do Podcast Man 3. <laughs> Because that's happening. Iron Podcast 3? <laughs> blank check with Griffin and David present. Are you guys actually Iron Man Pod? About blank check? We we love the movie we, Blank Check. I think we and have we to love get Tone Loke. Yeah. And we would love to yeah, revisit that. I'm glad you love what Tone Loke is the guy we love. Tone Loke is the one person I remember in that movie. <laughs> MTV VJ Kennedy. Yeah, I know, I know. But I just remember Tone Loke. Wait, anyway. So Max Landis, uh, let's talk no. at the Mary Sue thing. We don't have to go for a no, long no. time. No, no. What does Emily want to say? There, there are many controversies here that we should talk. about. No, I'm not going to talk about Max Landis anymore. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like Max Landis is sort of like our era's Andy Dick. Like everybody has a story, not yeah. in the same crazy on drugs way. But he's just sort of debated. around. Yeah, uh, and and everybody has had an encounter that uh, they will not soon forget. But he makes um, himself visible. Definitely. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> I, 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 I think I think we need to see more like children of directors, like see them. You know, like I want to. Visibility is important. Um, <laughs> That's the kind of representation you want in media right now. Is visibility yeah. for yeah second generation filmmakers. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus here. Great, no. great, great guy. Uh, so he was a decent kisser. All know. right, shut okay, up. all right, let's all move right. on. Uh, so, but, but anyway, the, the, the Mary Sue thing was a bit of a bummer. Yeah, it, it, it's a bummer. It's also I would say that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I I edited one of the more visible great piece pieces by Tasha. anti that, yeah. and I felt a great amount of conflict before we ran it. Of like, well, should we actually like this is a this is bubbling up right now. This mm-hmm. is not a thing. Like, oh right, that you're like almost shedding too much light on right, right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, why are we giving this credit? But then it's less like, no, this is going to be pretty easy to just like kill in one fell right. soup. It's yes. like the points are out there, ready to be made. Like that it. That are clearly like I, I, it's not even it's not even that she's not a Mary Sue by whatever those definitions in it's just that doesn't like, yeah who cares and, <laughs> it's, for, it's a good you know, character it's a great character it seemed to be yeah. the complaints seemed to be yeah. like yeah you're, you're, Emily's not as into the character what are you into the character no I'm into the character okay. yeah right. no I was saying yeah I was saying like yeah oh, this is yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah yeah um, <laughs> the, I guess <laughs> Mary Sue the the definition the rough definition just for anyone who doesn't know is, is sort of this idea of like. A, a sort of fan fiction character yeah, of like how you would want to exist in, in that universe. Wesley Crusher. And she's too like perfect. It, like mm-hmm. she's like, yeah. you know, all around like no. Or like the movie ends with them doing something that's like crucial. Like where it's like, oh, yeah. the only way we can like stop this bomb is if someone can play Pac Man really yeah. well and like then can finally. Do whatever. Which is yeah. like so much sci fi. Like anything that's not hard sci fi is that. The special boy with powers that need to be awakened. Yeah. And that's 
Yeah. Well, that's a great point of, of the Tasha Robinson piece. Is she was just like, yeah, that's also every male character in like every sci-fi and action yeah. movie ever. That's what we mm-hmm. like in these movies. And yeah. Then, then you know the internet gets bogged down and like, well, Luke Skywalker is a much more flawed character, and like I, everyone's just, flawed. Everyone's very perfect. irritating. Who cares? <laughs> Fuck you. It's Star Wars. I had fun. Um, here, okay, here's one I want to talk about. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because this is one that I feel like is now bubbling up. At the time we're Both recording this, up. this has been the the uh, hashtag Where's Ray controversy oh, uh, yeah. about, about race representation about the, yeah. in, in merchandise. Well, you saw the explanation, right? Is that like they wanted spoiler. to keep it secret that she is as big of a character as she is, which is interesting. I would love to unpack that. I've had barely any time to, to think about that, there, really. There is some truth to the fact that it was kind of kept from us in the marketing that she was going to be the, 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 the Jedi, the lead. Very right? deliberate, and it was consistent throughout the entire marketing Not that she, She's in the marketing, obviously, and she's right, you know the biggest thing on the poster and so on and so forth. But, but they really played up the image of Finn holding yes, the lightsaber to throw did. everyone off their scent. And it even was, that like Lego piece, that uh, not the Lego piece, the um, Monopoly piece Yeah, that everyone's He's got a lightsaber? About. Yes. So there's this complaint that there's not enough Ray merchandise out there and there's a lot more Finn and the other male characters. The two big things that everyone has pointed out, merchandise is a, a bit of a, a specialty for me, Emily. So this is this is going to function as a merchandise spotlight for this episode. Go right ahead. Because I, I have a merch. lot of thoughts on this controversy. I see a lot of people talking about it. Go right ahead. fucking tracking the merch the way that I am. On the floor, yeah, fucking just... hustling every day, watching well, that merch. the Monopoly, and then there was this image people kept sharing of like right. five characters in a box. But I was like, yeah. well, surely there's other boxes. I don't, I don't know. Ready, ready to, to address both of these things? I, I mean, I don't care. I'm there sure Hasbro cu- I'm, I care a lot. Yeah, dude. I know. Not cut and dry answers. But I just want to—I want to throw out some facts that I don't think are being recognized in this conversation. Okay, uh-huh. so there's a Monopoly game comes with only four pieces, right? Of who you can play as. Wait, why are there only four pieces? Yeah, this Monopoly is another has question. Like exactly. Things. What is that? Exactly. Yeah, that has like spinning sense. wheels and makes no sense. dogs and yeah. hats and stuff. Like, and that's yeah. never. Granted, like maybe this is a correction because that's way too many things. Like, not that many people are playing Monopoly that's true. at who one time. Who sits down for an Correct. eight-player Monopoly but game? It's nice to have a choice. Sometimes yeah. you're feeling like a thimble. Well, sometimes so, you're feeling agreed like well, 100 Sometimes I would put yeah. the hat on the dog and play as the dog wearing <laughs> yeah, a hat. Yeah, but you're a goddamn lunatic, David, and we know that. <laughs> I know. I'm out of, I'm out of you're control. You're out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> Um, it only has four pieces, which is lunacy. A Sims level of lunacy in and of itself. Right? Are they just being cheap? Are they like pewter pieces? Because I had like the classic trilogy um, yes. Monopoly, and those mm-hmm. are like, those are pretty nice. Nice pewter like, pieces. Yeah. Yeah. These are, like, is it four, though, or do they give no, you a six? No, they give you like six or eight or something. You had like Han, Luke, yeah, Leia, yeah, yeah, yeah. Darth. Um, this Chewy. is, they're like larger, Archie. and they're like painted. They're not just like metal. Or maybe they are metal, but they're painted. Like they look more accurate they're like than the D&D little metal D&D pieces or something. Yeah, they look like little like sort of like model, like tabletop game yeah. pieces. Gotcha. There's only four. It's Luke, Darth, Kylo Ren, and Finn. Right, pretty weird. Darth Vader not in this I movie. I don't, so is this. But it's young Luke too. It's like farm boy Luke. So is this new Star Wars, like a new general all-purpose Star Wars Monopoly, or is this Force Awakens Monopoly? I believe this is Star Wars Monopoly. This is a new Star Wars Monopoly incorporating Force Awakens. So it's got like like, Jakku, Jakku. but it's also got Dagobah or whatever. Right, exactly. You know, and like uh, it has fucking Naboo and whatever, you know? Does it have the the Hosnian system? Oh, yeah. I think, I don't know exactly what the Can we talk about the Hosnian system (laughs) for a second? Absolutely. Wow. Oh, because yeah. of course, oh, his last oh, this Hosley. is what you wanted to get to. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that was okay. the shout out. Ben point number one. Ben, ben Hosley. Point number Very one. excited. Wow, your name was represented twice in this movie. What's your middle name? Is your middle name like Ray or James? Finn or Poe or Dameron or? No, anything? it's uh, it's McCormick. Oh, all right. Well, fine. That's but, fine. But the main villain of this film is named Ben. Kylo Ben. <laughs> right. Name ben McCormick. Yeah. Go on. Go ahead. Sorry. And then the Haas. We call you the Haas, and there's the Hosnian system. It's true. Yeah. So, so does did anybody? Because I remember being very upset after this. Actually, so the main death that happens in this movie mm-hmm. didn't hit me emotionally. Mm, was mean. very emotional when I thought that Coruscant. You thought destroyed. Coruscant bit the dust. <laughs> I was very upset Coruscant, about a that. planet we've yeah. talked about quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, on this podcast, <laughs> because you know, I don't know if you know this, Emily. But the whole, oh, the, the computer whole, closed. David just closed his laptop <laughs> dramatically. The whole planet, the whole planet of Coruscant's a city. The I whole know. planet's a city. How we, do you even like? District that we've had, right? a, we've had a lot of discussion over how that could possibly work. Yeah, it's also how does side parking work? <laughs> <laughs> is it like get to the southern hemisphere? We're clean in the north this time. Also, I, I just wanna I just wanna bring it back to my fanfic, the most important part of Please. This. Was it set on Coruscant? My other one, my more experimental fanfic was set on Coruscant. Whoa, wait. In 
what I call the lower coruscant, yeah, which is right. the uh, yeah. the but lower like, levels of it. It was some Blade mm-hmm. Runner shit. Oh, um, yeah. And it had a Mary Sue who did not have the force, and I thought that was super, super. So um, she was just like a bandit. She was just a bandit. more of a Han yeah, Solo yeah, yeah, type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and it's very, very expressly like the term. Like, she did not have the force. Did she want the force? She's just an idiot. Never wants the force. No, she's just a good fighter. Cool. Like, cool. Yeah. So this was set like in among the scum and villainy of mm-hmm. like. Because I mean, it is crazy how the prequels, like the the most they do that is just that one, the, the bar, bar with the scene. death sticks. Yeah. Yes. And even that's like. Not like they should have gone into the death. Like, like down. I, I'm very. That's actually. I feel like the biggest loss of those movies is that Coruscant. From the moment that you see Coruscant in the special edition of Jedi, sure. I was immediately transfixed. Yeah, what is this? Because city? I was like, this was also before I saw Blade Runner and any cyberpunk stuff, and I was like, oh, like a city in space, like a super super futuristic thing. Like that Full seems aesthetic. like my shit. Yeah. And then I I got into that stuff, but like. That seemed like the biggest missed opportunity in those prequels, like spending for spending so much time on clearly the best planet. They spend a lot of time there, and they do. I mean, mostly they hang out in like hotel rooms and balconies and stuff <laughs> yeah. that are like way up at the top or the Jedi Temple, have away you from guys the pain about and suffering. How, how they have such nice apartments. We have talked oh, yeah. about it so much. <laughs> yeah. One, all right, we talked about how Darth Sidious and Darth Maul appear to have like a very nice apartment with a balcony where they chat. They just share mm-hmm. it together, and yeah. then and then of Anakin course, and Padme. Anakin and Padme yeah. have like a fucking palace, yeah. and they just like sit. Like, she's just it's just couches. Crystals. It has like eighty couches. Yeah. yeah, the biggest living room I've ever seen. It has a helicopter landing pad practically <laughs> yeah. for a balcony. Yeah. It's yes, so it big. Yes, it does. Like yes. you could land the freaking yes. Death Star on that thing. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Yes, and we like, can. I mean, <laughs> we you see Emily should have been on this podcast the whole time. You should be on every episode. <laughs> Sorry, Emily, we talk so much about can Carson. Take over. <laughs> um, can I throw out two two quick sidebars off of things? We're but anyway, right but now? well, the thing is, Carson is actually not destroyed in yeah. the movie. It turns yeah. out it's Hosnian it's Prime, Hosnian. which I just, they do say it. It's, it's very huge vague. Amount I'm very excited. Of, 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 of retconning is that a, the right term well, for this because it was so confusing and it, it was such a way to like have something that looks like Coruscant getting destroyed happen. But it's not that like it could have been, you know, it could have been something more like Alderaan, which is supposed to be like, not quite as urban. Well, Alderaan's and, been blown up, though. I know, I but know. it like, but like, it didn't need to. be Oh, you're saying it didn't to look like city that. planet thing. No, like, it's I too agree. confusing. It was confusing, and also like I sifted through all the other shit, you know, all the stuff they put out, and apparently like the idea is the Senate moves yeah. every year or whatever. Yeah. And like okay, no, but not every year. Or, I think they do that because of like after the battle or whatever. Like after right. they defeat the empire, they move. So you can't pin them down. They just no, forward their mail yeah. to a different place, so but, people it takes them a little yeah. while to find them. Can I throw out two quick things? Sure, you just go right ahead and throw out two quick things. Okay, on, What's thing on the topic of what we're talking about, thing one. Boom. Uh, before he sold uh, Lucasfilm off to Disney, George Lucas was in. Uh, uh, development on he had apparently written like 70 scripts or not himself written but commissioned 70 scripts for what was going to be an hour long live action Star Wars TV show right. called Star Wars Underworld and the entire idea was I want to make like a TV MA CD underbelly of Star Wars criminals bars stuff like that uh-huh. it probably wouldn't have been executed well but it's a cool no. idea that I hope yeah, they revisit yeah. now uh, second thing is they've talked about it. They say those scripts like exist. They like, exist. They, they have that raw material. Probably take a lot of work to make them. <laughs> good. A lot of work. But but I want a show like that. Yeah, that Netflix. Sounds real. It'd cool. be on Netflix. Yeah. Also, I mean, I don't. It's not going to be like a hard R or anything. But Rogue One does sound a little like that. Sure, Rogue One, the upcoming mm-hmm. uh, 2016 yeah, yeah. Star Wars entry. It sounds like it's mostly like non-powered. Here, here's human what I criminals. want from. Okay. Here's what I want from Rogue One. Yeah, S- space, space battle. I want space. Mm-hmm. I want space. I want this movie lacks space. for space battles. Uh, I want to be in space. It does have space battles, but. They are maybe the least interesting. They're, they're not very yeah. arresting. I, I kind of like the first uh, Tie Fighter escape scene. But that's, that's not fun. a space battle. No, that's a that's a within in the atmosphere. It's yeah. it's true. <laughs> it's it, look. It's as good as you get. You at least see the blackness of space. Yeah. No, that 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 is the best. Actually, that's I feel like that's the best action sequence of the whole movie. I think the 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 Falcon scene is the best. Yeah, yeah, the first one when they escape. No, no, I'm talking about the Tie Fighter escape scene, Emily. When, when Poe po and Finn escape from the Star Destroyer. That's your f- no. I'm not saying it's my favorite. I just it's in space. That's my second. Oh, oh, That's yeah, like yeah. Literally... The best actual space battle. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Millennium you know, Falcon on Jakku is my favorite. Yeah, the Millennium. Yeah. That is the best. Yeah, the best. that's the one where it really feels like it's clicking and like yeah. mm-hmm. there's I'm like, like oh, a lot of a momentum. Woo! Yeah, yeah, here we go. Here we and go. Like character beats. They're fun. Yeah. 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 Uh, point two. 
Uh, Wait, Art, Art of Point one was just the Star Wars Underworld series. Oh, sure. Okay. I just want to bring up two points based off of what we were talking uh, about. Oh, you about said Rogue One. Our, our love of uh, CD criminal stuff in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Point two is a, there's an Art of Star Wars book that just came out, sure. mm-hmm. which is very interesting because they threw a lot of shit at the wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, there was the point in time where J. Drums got hired. Michael Arndt had written a script. They didn't like it. Right. So they were like nine months out from needing to film. He and Lawrence Kasdan decided they were pretty much going to start from scratch. But they already need to start like building stuff. So he just went to like their art department and was like, hey, just start designing stuff you think would be cool in a Star Wars movie. And sometimes they'd look at a design and be like, oh, we'll write that in. Right. Like Captain Phasma, who was barely written in. But like someone drew <laughs> yeah, that sure. and he was like, oh, that's an interesting idea for a character. We'll put her in. Stuff like that. So <laughs> make it out of metal. <laughs> <laughs> the artist Star Wars book is more interesting than most art books because they were like also letting the art department is, guys. This, this isn't the visual dictionary. This is the art of Star Wars. Yeah, this I have is like this the coffee on my table. Desk right now. Yeah. Emily, fucking thing. give it to me. I want this book. Okay, great. I need somebody to give it to. Wait, but Emily, it. Emily, what about giving it to me? I should have just brought it with me. Ah, oh, he oh, blew it. You should give it to Ben. He's the nicest because oh. he didn't ask for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like some King Lear shit here. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I, had a, I had a galaxy named after me, and it's gone. <laughs> it's just a solar system. Oh, sorry. Whatever. Yeah. No, it's quite all right. Um, there is in sorry, this book sorry to harsh you <laughs> several pages about they'd considered creating a new plan for the movie. One of my gripes of the movie, and it's a movie I do like a lot. You think I've turned to the dark Yeah, side. I think you fucking I've downgraded suck. my opinion a little bit, but I still no, like it a lot. Right. I think it's very fun fucking movie. I was more amped up about that two weeks ago. I know. Now Wait, I'm kind of... Amped and then, then you started missing now? I was like really into the movie and I was just like... I was in that sort of kid mode where I'm like, I just like Star Wars. I just like Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, I like yeah. Star Wars. And I didn't like, I would like another TV show be on and I'd just sort of be like, this isn't Star Wars. I, uh-huh. I want like a Star Wars thing to happen <laughs> yeah. right now. And like, That's I almost, why I went back and watched the prequels because I was like, let's, let's think about Star Wars some more. I, I had already done that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I purposefully did not do it. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, I saw the second time and started oh, and you, you were like, certain oh, things. David, and David, I'm not sure if I liked it. And I was just like, no, I, I said I liked it a lot. I'm not sure if I love it. That was my nice special experience where we had a great time watching it. In the Art of Star Wars book, this is the point I wanted to say about the Art of Star Wars book, there was like a couple pages devoted to a certain point they were considering a planet. It wasn't oh, yeah. written in the script, but they were like, maybe go here. One of my gripes with the movie is that like all the new plants we go to are pretty much carbon yes. copies of like oh, the yeah, Hosian yeah. system looks like Coruscant. Yeah. Jakku is essentially just Tatooine yeah, with yeah. a new name. What's the new other one that looks like Yavin? I don't even know yeah, what it's called, it's but, but Mas Kanata's yeah. planet, whatever, like, yeah, whatever it's yeah. called. Yeah. Uh, all of them does have look planet. like, uh, and the Starkiller base looks like Hoth when they're on the planet. It looks mm-hmm. like Hoth right. when they're on the base. Um, Except there are trees. The one thing that's kind of cool is the, uh, the the planet Luke's on planet. Yes. You know? No, that's yeah. the one yeah. really the neat thing. they found yeah. a nice location to shoot yeah, like at. Michael in Ireland. Yeah. Um, they had uh, considered Hakodano. That's her planet. The uh, you know the the yeah. one where Maz Kanata is. Yeah. The one like Taco- what's it called? Takodana. See, I've totally missed that, and I've seen it twice now. And I usually try really hard to pay attention to planets. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one where they land, and Ray's like, "I've never seen so much green." Yeah. And Harrison, yeah. I mean, Han gives her this like uh, look. Yeah, this oh, like, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> way to bring the mood down, kid. <laughs> um, they, uh, I don't know where it would have fit into the story if it was a thing that just guys started drawing, and then they were like, "Ah, no, we're not going to write that into the script." Mm. But there. Are several pages in this book devoted to the idea of name feels like a placeholder a planet called crime city (laughs) probably a placeholder yeah crime city makes no sense because uh it's a planet not a city agreed (laughs) hence a placeholder is it all one word like crime city cremesity no it was two words it was if it was cremesity that'd be awesome If it was Cremesity, or even if it was, like, Chimesity. And then it would be in the IMDb (laughs) trivia section. It would be, like, Cremesity, actually, if you put a space there, it's just this crime city. My favorite IMDb trivia fact. My favorite IMDb trivia fact of all time is on the trivia page for Batman Forever. Sure. It says, uh, Nicole Kidman's character's name of Dr. Chase Chase Meridian Meridian is an allusion to the fact that women are always chasing after Batman. (laughs) What? Is it really? I mean... Are they? Are Says women that guy. chasing after Batman? It's not really like what you're like. Oh, you know, Batman dresses like a bat. Women are always chasing him around. Like that's not really where like does Meridian. Come from? Where the hell does Meridian just come from? Cool. I think they called her that because it was a cool name. And some guy sat there and went. It is like, such a '90s name, Chase Meridian, yes. and she's a psychiatrist. It's such a like '90s. She sounds like paradigm. Chase Meridian, PI, works in Crime City. <laughs> that's also literally the only movie where the woman is chasing after Batman. That's the one where she's like, that's the plot. Is she's like, I know Batman Forever is weird because it is. 
is about a woman who like really wants to fuck Batman. Not, like not does Bruce not Wayne. Like, no. <laughs> like Batman. No, she's got like a she Batman suit. Like, yeah. yeah. Like she comes up to Batman and she's like, you are wearing a rubber suit and I like that. And he's like, <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah, and there's that weird part where she fucks a five-year-old boy on Halloween because he's wearing a Batman costume. Do you remember that scene? Griffin, I'm not into this. In Batman Forever? <laughs> it's a weird, it's very schumacher in. I remember when I, when I saw Batman Forever, I was yeah. like nine and I still didn't think that people could kiss on screen unless they were married. Well, well, I'm right, revealing, right, I just yeah. thought that How that was only kiss. something that married yeah. people could do. So I thought that whenever people kissed on screen who were not married, it was some sort of like special effect that was <laughs> And like I wasn't seeing a lot of movies where people were kissing, I think, because yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. But Batman has like making out scenes. And I was just like, How do they do this? Wow. This looks really wow. real. Rick wow. Baker had to make Rick Baker had to make prosthetic tongues for <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, I was scenes. like, is this like a trick photography? Like silicone lips. Mirrors involved. Yeah. Uh cr- Crime City uh looks cool. Was a okay. different vibe. Was like really low life, beaten down. Yeah, uh, stars. If I if I can just finish up this, this oh toy thing, just merchandise spotlight. Oh, we got into like seventeen toys. spotlight. <laughs> we got a seventeen sidebar. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Malby said only has four How do you characters. Keep track of this? It's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> we have like fans. people like tweeted us <laughs> and they're the like, "You forgot to Malibu. talk about that thing you were saying about Harry Potter." And oh my I'm god! Like, I'm sorry. But they also only say that because they like listening to this, which is still insanity. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Insanity. At all. Respect your fans. There's love they're... our fans. I love them. I just... we don't have a name for them. Well, they were calling themselves present heads. I think now they're blank checkers. They're blankies. <laughs> the blankies. <laughs> the blankies. Emily the blankies. has named our fan. Oh. Yeah. So just tweet at Emily Ishida. Yeah. Hashtag blankies. <laughs> and then post a picture of you with a blankie. Perfect. And a thumb in your mouth. Like or maybe a cute fan, like fan art of me and you with a. All right, anyway. Yeah. Sure. Or make a bl- make a blankie and stitch our faces on. What's your them. point about the fucking toys? There are only four characters. If there was like eight and Ray was not one of them, I'd be like absolute bullshit. Yeah, sure. Right. Clear sexism. In this case, it's like hero villain, hero villain, and yeah. I do think there's something to the fact that I, I think in some degree You're it's defending a this. I'm not into no, this. No, no, but you I'm really gonna, I'm gonna think cover... you can make room. For, I'm sorry. I'm there, sorry. There could be a. I'm gonna get in character. here. Yeah. Oh, how boy. how is there room for Kylo Ren? Then? How is there room for like Darth Vader? Hero villain. Hero villain. I mean, no, 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 this is what I want to say. This no. is what I want to say. This is the big point I want to make. Okay, the argument for Hasbro's point of like we were saving until after the movie comes out, which I think is a little bit of ass covering. Uh, wh- a little bit. Here's my one <laughs> counterpoint to it. Griffin. The other thing they didn't release at all before the movie came out was Han Solo in any form. Uh-huh. That's true. There were no Han Solos. Weird. Which is another thing they so wanted they to see. they didn't have, like, save. an old Han Solo? Came out after the movie came but- out. Do they have, like, one with a hole in his chest now? Just so that you can <laughs> Will come out after the Blu-ray. Drop from a, from a great height. <laughs> yeah. Comes with catwalk. <laughs> what is he doing on that catwalk? <sighs> Hugging his son. No, I mean, it's Kylo where you Ren, go like, when you want to find your yeah. dad. You go to a yeah. catwalk. I know, it's fine. It's yeah. just like, I wish there was like, it'd be funny if he was like, you know, there's like a computer there and he's like, all right, you're going to have to. He's like twiddling some knobs. That's the one he's email station they have. Is they good Wi Fi there? Um, um, no, 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 no. Okay, so I, hero villain, hero villain is not a good point because well, the Monopoly there is not dumb. A good, I'm not defending the Monopoly. There is not. That's not that doesn't uh, it's not reflective of the of the uh, uh, demographics of the I Star agree. Wars universe. It should I probably agree. be like one villain and three heroes. Also, like how is if there's not room for Rey, fine, she's new, she's only been in one movie. How is there not room for Leia? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. They'll it's offer bullshit. an expansion pack or something. Probably. Well, they said they're they're refreshing it, and the next version is going to come out with Rey instead of Finn. Um, they could have just also also all of these um, the. This is the thing about not wanting to spoil Ray being such a big character, mm-hmm. like because obviously we don't know how big a character uh, Finn is either. But I just, think that just was just the bait and switch. Send her out with her. Send it out with her stick. Yeah, she's got. Yeah. Stick. Send out the lightsaber later. The stick's cool. Well, this is the thing I would like to say. Oh my god, Ray's my favorite character in the new movie. I've been desperately trying to find any sort of Ray toy. There are like. 15 that have been produced. Uh-huh. All of them are the oh, most difficult ones to find. They get sold out. Right, because like, yes. like, people want them. Yeah. You mean? Yeah, right, yes. Right. But there's a thing where like... I are... considered buying the little Lego uh, of her ship. Yeah, yeah. It's like only 20 bucks. With the it's speeder, with her yeah. little bike. It's very yeah, cute. Really mm-hmm. cute. Yeah. Um, that's like the one that you can still sort of find. Sure. Um, they didn't produce enough to meet demand. I think they underproduced Ray, and to make matters worse, most versions of Ray were packaged with BB-8. So it's the two best characters in one package. And you just can't like get them. Impossible to find. Those are the two best characters. Yeah. Uh, y'all have the Sphero. Oh, I got that Sphero. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm all about that Sphero. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Do you have one? It's impossible it's to use, but it is so cute. It is so cute. It's the best. Um... Um, Ben's just giving us the time. He's just telling us how long There are a couple cases of like boxes of multiple characters that they've left Ray out of that I think are pretty egregious and inexcusable. But I think a lot of people have looked at and gone like, oh, there's no Ray merchandise, which there is. 
They just, just haven't really, produced really enough, hard. and it's really yeah. hard to find. It's a case of everyone being wrong and everyone being right at the same time. Sure. I want to say. But I see a lot of people glossing over it and going like, oh, they didn't make anything. They made stuff. Yeah, not no. enough. Right. A couple it's of the exclusions were gross. They're fuck up. I also, if you find Ray toys, please send them to me. Uh, Griffin David present at gmail.com. Email me a toy. Oh, we're going to have to update the email. No, I think hold on to the old email for no. Let's update. Today. Really, let's update. Um, yeah. I, I, I have. So, uh, I saw some very cute fan art. I'm. I'm usually like. I actually the cuteness is the thing that's getting to me the most about about Force Awakens. Like the cuteness factor between like Ray and which makes me just. I have warm fuzzies about Ray anyway because mm. of, like the nature of that character and the Poe and Finn thing. People are shipping Poe and Finn. It's very. It's a very sweet movie. It's like much and, and not in a way that I hate. Like I think there's a lot of ways that could be bad, but I. I, I I saw. I have to find. This. I think it's, it's a movie sweet about in a good friends. Way too. I think yeah. that the Han Solo death scene actually one of the reasons it worked for me. I mean, you, you heartless people apparently didn't. Uh, I like the I movie know. a no, lot. I know, I know. I'm kidding. Um, that's that's fantastic. Isn't that I, this adorable? is this is a Bill Waterston themed uh, piece <laughs> of art. It looks like you know Calvin and Hobbes, but it's Ray and BB-8. It's great. This is a new segment called Emily's fan Emily's art fan art corner, uh-huh, Emily's and Emily fan describes. Art. Fan you want to credit? Uh, do, who's the artist of that? Oh, who is the artist of this? Um, uh, Brian Kessinger. Um, Good job, it's Brian. On, it's on Instagram. His name is B R I A N Kessinger. K E S I N G E R. Um, and it's it's like yeah, Ray and BB-8 in a sled going down a mountain. And then their little their little piece of uh, Tie Fighter trash. Oh, right, right. right, that thing she uses to like. I love yeah, that yeah. part. But you know, well, where where was the scene that showed us like how she learned how to repel? And like how to like sled like there should have been all these scenes to explain all these skills she had. Also, it's outrageous. That scene where Ray and I go out to dinner and just have like a really nice that conversation. Not that part, movie. no, but it is in my movie, Dave. Uh, <laughs> I just like I, one thing I, I like about I want to marry Steve myself into the movie. Is they are very childish, both of them, mm-hmm. uh, Ray and Finn. Like mm-hmm. I love the idea that Finn's like a newborn in this movie. And I also read that both of them are supposed to be nineteen. They're supposed to be nineteen yeah. years mm-hmm. old. Yeah. And that she is, she's kind of like a child, like in a way. Yeah. Like yeah. In, in the, I mean, she's like a tougher well, she's child. Like, she's like arrested her development in a certain right. way waiting for her parents. So, yeah. Right. And like, and the, you know, I think one of her best little notes is right at the beginning when she puts the helmet on. Because I was talking to my mm-hmm. friend about this movie and he was saying the first time he saw it, he was a little confused by Ray because he's like, she just keeps getting like sucked into a thing. It's like someone sort of comes along and she gets wrapped up in and it's like. Oh, you mean like what happens in Star Wars movies? No, I know. But then he was. And so <laughs> the way that Star Wars he movies felt work? like a little confused. And then he like, saw it a second time and he, he had like not really noticed the helmet scene. He's like, of course, right. She wants to. She yeah, wants, yeah. wants to get out there. You know, yeah, that's she wants to. And her she's version little, of like, looking at the two sunsets. Yeah. And she's like, got the yeah. little doll. She's got like a weird little Rebel Alliance, uh-huh. like, yeah. like a pilot a little, doll. A little X-Wing pilot. And she like totally is studied up on her lore. She knows, oh, totally. She that's knows, the I, thing. That's actually one of my favorite parts is that she knows Han Solo as the oh. smuggler, a famous smuggler. We, so we talked good. about that before. That, isn't that great? It's when, very, when, very when nice. He's, and, and that he's like the, you mean yeah. the, the rebel general who yeah. I hate. Yeah. <laughs> he's brainwashing. Uh, I was talking about that with like I have like a dumb like take, which is like they're all like fans, right? Like Ray's like yeah. a fan who like yes. learned all the languages and learned how everything works, and like she's like she's like really into all the details of it, and like. Kylo Ren is like the fan who's like, it has to be exactly like I want it to be. Yeah. And like, He's the angry Darth nerd Vader gamer is so gay. cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then Finn is the one who's like, I don't know what any of this really is, I think, but it's really delightful. I think like, I'm really, <laughs> like, I'm really into it. Finn's the new great. fan. <laughs> Finn's, Finn's the someone fan. entering yeah, into yeah, yeah, fandom wow, late. like, look yeah. at all this stuff. Yeah, he's learning about it and getting excited at the same time. So That's there you go, nice. there's my hot take. Yeah. See, if I was a freelancer, a I'd be take. pitching that take around. <laughs> now, can I ask you guys, since yeah. we, you've all seen the movie twice now, and I remember from the last episode, you had mentioned it not being clear why there was the New Republic and the Separatists. Yeah, that, it's not clear that, in the movie. No. It's still not clear. No, it's been know, explained, I guess, online, but it's not clear in the movie at all. They apparently shot all of that stuff. And some of the books that have come out, not just like the like uh, you know side story books, but like novelization and some of the like children's adaptations that are supposed to be representing scenes from the movie include pieces that went into that more in depth. There was supposed to be, I think, a whole scene on the Hosnian system with there's a woman who you see who's yeah, like, it, framed at the center. Yeah. Well, when she's about to die on that like balcony, oh, yeah. right? And she's an actress, Maisie Williams. Oh yeah, right. She's like done some work. When they cast her, there was sort of an announcement, and then she appears Wait, like for she's one. Not second. Maisie, Williams Maisie Williams of is... Game of Thrones. Maybe Maisie Williams is th- uh, Maisie Seller Richardson or something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll I think her name is I'll Maisie Seller. It's definitely Richardson Maisie something. or something like that. Maisie Richardson Sellers. I was flipped. Pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she was in the originals. 
Oh. CW's hit Vampire Diaries. Oh, I thought you meant the original the Star original Wars. She was in the original Star Wars movies. Yeah. I know the originals also. <laughs> uh. um, and that's about it. But she was in those. She had a recurring part, 14 episodes in the originals. Oh, and she's her. in uh, the upcoming Of Kings and Prophets, which is an ABC series based on the Bible. Oh, good good source that. material. Yeah, no, I hear it's, uh, hear it's a gripping read. Yeah. Good book, good book. I told you my story about like my friend. <laughs> I'm going to give myself uh, negative my, 10 comedy points for that uh, one. I told you my story. Real my, did I tell you? No, I was telling Pilot. Like, I, my, I had a friend who was from Kurdistan, and he like did know, knew nothing of like Christian mythology, and uh-huh. he saw The Passion of the Christ Ooh, like in theaters. Interesting. And he, what he said to him like, was like, um, did you did you know about that movie? Like, I mean, did you know that story? Like, they beat the shit out of him. Like, just had no like reference point really for That's it. Amazing. And it was like he was like, it's a good story. Like, you know, like anyway. Oh man, that would be such a good episode if we were still doing no bits bits. If we did ten episodes deconstructing the Passion of the Crisis, like, we didn't know the never Bible. Read the Bible. <laughs> oh, That's such an original I just Do not want to watch that movie. I don't either. It's really oh. okay. Um, Wait, what were we talking about? So we finished talking about toys. Right, oh, right. Okay. done with toys. Right. So, so God. The, the Republic uh, with the First yeah, Order right. and how they're set up, it's unclear. That was cut out. This is a thing that people have been talking about a lot. And and this is, I have more, it's not a problem, but I, I'm more interested in this than you are. You sort of don't care, David. I'd love to hear how you I feel about this, Emily. What do you feel about? I think there's very clearly like 40 minutes cut out of this movie. And not just oh, like yeah. scenes trimmed, but like entire like sequences Abram says and plot 20. lines. I know. I mean, that's, he a, might be that's lying. a couple. That's a couple of scenes. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's no way that Poe wasn't supposed to appear at all between when the Tie Fighter crashes and when he shows up back on Maz Kaneda's plan, which I already forgot the name of. Takodana. Takodana. Um, Taco Bell. Just because he's a guy who's so obsessed with moments and those like big payoff moments, and when they cut to Poe in the X Wing, it's just kind of like, oh, here's Poe again. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't quite hit in the same way as like. All this solo popping out of the sun, or something. right? Yeah. If they wanted Ooh, you to actually does that. believe, <laughs> popular scene, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, good if, scene. If they want us to actually believe that he was dead for that section of the movie, a, I don't think the first image they ever put out of Poe in the first teaser trailer would have been him in the flight suit in his X-wing flying. No, I get what you're saying. I just, I don't know. I don't really care. I want as I much Oscar that, Isaac as I, I can don't get. Care that much about I think it. That I think it works. I like his return. I think that's fun. I like the X wings on the water and stuff, and the, like, the music kind of. And picks I'm actually up. grateful, even though like you think of Star Wars as being three characters that are hanging out together, but I do like that there's enough time for. Finn and Ray to hang out and just have an established a dynamic without right. having like a bunch of characters thrown in. I mean, like right. Han and Chewie are there, but it's mostly about them. I like that, that a lot too. I would have liked to have seen whatever Poe was doing. And there are a couple He's things just like that. To the I don't thing. need like explanations. I don't need like you know, making fun of me again. He said he was over this, Sorry. and now he's making fun of me and my voice with a really accurate impression. <laughs> <laughs> On Sorry, go, on, my... go on, go on, go on, go on. No, I just, the movie moves really fast. It moves at a very fast clip. It's yeah. very fun. It keeps the ball uh, in the air. Up until a certain point. What's the point where it sort of gets molasses? Um, that's, uh, Taco Donna right? and Taco Bell? No, well, kind of, but I like, I like Maz Kanata enough. Yeah. Um, Second act does lag, though. But uh, the the stupid scene that should have been deleted with the stupid monsters on the stupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that scene. Like, that was so unnecessary. It's, you could make a clean cut. It mm-hmm. screamed as like, and you see it in Marvel movies a lot. You see it in mm-hmm. a lot of these where it's they were just like, we need another action. Yeah. You know, like we there's there we need like they're just literally looking yeah. like an energy yeah, like, like read of okay. the movie. Yeah. And it's been like, ten we got, minutes. We need well, and that's here. I think that's just about where the trash shoot monster would have been in New Hope, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. which is which is the slowest part of New mm-hmm. Hope for sure. But it's also like we've just met back up with our great old friend Han Solo. We just want to spend time with him, and then immediately we have to deal with some monsters. Like, let's keep just well, talking to Han. Also, I see the point, and it may, be of a, like, it may have been like a Larry Kazan idea or whatever, where like, we need Han to be doing like smuggler business. We need like a whole smuggler thing to happen. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And here he is, he's, he's talking to the guys from the raid, and he's <laughs> yeah. talking to the guys from Lockout or whatever, the <laughs> Scottish guys, you know. And like, Lockdown, lo- whatever. Just yeah, like, Lockout. Mm-hmm. It was called Lockout. That movie's good. With Guy Pierce. Yeah, I like that movie. movie a lot. Yeah. Have you seen that movie? No, oh, I haven't. It's, a masterpiece. it's like Escape from New York in space and Guy Pierce plays like Kurt mm. Russell. It's really fun. Huh. It's a good movie. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. We'll do a podcast about that. Anyway, so you, I, that's a fair, like your complaint is fair. The uh, Emily, I'm pointing at Emily. Yeah. Uh, this is a podcast. Nobody can see. 
Um, the, 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 the tentacle monster scene is just kind of shitty. No, and it looks bad, too. It doesn't does look, look last minute. It doesn't look like they spent very much time rendering those tentacles. And and I watched it, and I was like, oh, this must be where poor Harrison Ford broke his leg. Cause they're no like, question, because doors yeah. are closing yeah. left and right. Yeah. 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 What if it wasn't? What if it was just like the door to the cafeteria? Well, I <laughs> heard that it was... They were like... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, did you hear the story that it, like the door closed on his leg, and Abrams just ran on set, very nice of yeah. him, and tried to like lift it off of him? And sprained his... was a yeah. Hydraulic door, so Abrams like yeah, like broke a backbone. Yeah, he oh, was God. wearing yeah. like an like a hidden cast. Yeah, he didn't like, tell under anyone. his shirt for like the whole shoot because otherwise they would have tried to fire him. Not fire him, but like put him on medical leave or right. whatever. Um, I did think it's funny. I don't know if it was a conscious joke, but the end of that stupid tentacle chase scene is Ray defeating the monster by closing his legs in a door. Yeah, I know. I mean, it can't be a joke, or is it, is it like a Spider Man two thing where he Maybe. goes my back? Yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> Remember that. And it's it's a reference, uh, it's trying, a reference trying to get to more money, it's fine, it's fine, trying to get yeah. that salary scrilla. <laughs> um, I just think J.J. Abrams is like a very good magician, you know? Like his main thing is like getting your attention, working you in, you were able to overlook. I think he's good at pacing a movie in a way, kind of Christopher Nolan can do it too, where it's like you just don't think about right. it too hard. Exactly. And you just sort of, you're right. A, a musician that I am mutual followers with on Twitter described him as a. Uh, uh, AI of a uh, young, fresh director, like like basically a program written right. to like oh, make yeah. it feel yes. like a young, like young hot Hollywood, mm-hmm. like Colin Trevorrow. Cause, cause type. He's got a trim and he's got like glasses and a haircut. Yeah, yeah. Just but not like, even the look. Well. Just like how movie his movies yeah. feel. It's just yeah. like yeah, this makes sense. Like I, I no pref- argument here. Yeah. It's functional. I prefer him to Colin Trevorrow though, as do you. Um, well, yeah, considering that Colin Trevorrow is one of my two least favorite human beings of all time. Who's the other one? My dad. That's not true. I had to come up with a joke really quickly. I, as I said, <laughs> two, I knew you were going to say that. I love my dad. I was like struggling to think. We are in the UCV headquarters. I was struggling to think of someone else that wasn't an offensive joke. I threw my dad under the bus. I'm sorry, Peter. Never mind. Anyway, we um, don't really like Colin Trevorrow. The well, biggest I, bummer yeah. about The Force yeah. Awakens is that Colin Trevorrow is directing episode nine. Yeah, I feel like mm, I feel like that's kind of like, uh, oh, this is a bad Say it, say it, say it. We Come said, no kind of like the thing. next, the next uh, World Cup being in Qatar. Oh, totally. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. where you're like, mm-hmm. Jesus. that's not. Mm, We're gonna that's... be bummed out about this. <laughs> you're later. gonna run into some problems. <laughs> <laughs> In my, uh, you know, I know Ryan Johnson's. I keep saying to myself, Ryan Johnson's writing episode nine as if I know yeah. episode eight's going to be good. Like, I, who, it, it might be is. a piece of shit. I don't it know. Probably is. I also would say, I mean, we got a lot of time. Colin Trevor could get fired between now and then. Tax I know. evasion. That's my thing, baby. He's going to get arrested for tax evasion. He's Let's not get gonna, on that. Yeah. Somebody start, yeah. start doing their research. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, let's start digging. <laughs> going through his trash. Well, you pitched on Twitter. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, a Kickstarter a movie? for a movie about us trying to stop him from making episode nine. And then someone pointed out that the brilliant third act was would be that you betray me when Colin gives you a part in the movie, <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> which oh. would be really good. And then Wait, I'm on my own. I want to know who you guys would rather have do nine, like knowing nothing. Obviously, yeah. we don't know where well, it's going to be going, but imagining that it is like similar, it has a similar place as Jedi. Griffin was trying to be real, like you know, gung ho and and like trying to find a, f- a female director. It seemed right. You on yeah. Twitter? I forget who you suggested a name. I can't remember. Who I it was. really like Jennifer Kent. I want Jennifer Kent to do everything. Jennifer Kent's budget cool. Thing. She I made think the she's Babadook. so great. Mm. Yeah, uh, I just said Brad Bird because that's Bird's who I wanted to make one this pick. one. Yeah, Brad Bird is my number one pick because I just yeah, think I he's the want, best Brad director of my, action yeah. alive. Yeah. in my opinion. But I uh, saw J.J. Abrams mentioned recently that he had met with uh, Ava DuVernay, and she's apparently a really big Star Wars fan. Cool. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, then you should give her a Star Wars movie. Yeah, she should make a Star if Wars she movie. likes Star Wars. Let her make a Star Wars movie. Ava right DuVernay now. should make a movie. Yeah. That's yeah. my opinion. Yeah. yeah, I like her making Did movies. Did we have this conversation, Emily? I forget. Uh, I was talking I don't know. about this with someone where I was like, I really just want her to make a movie. I, yeah. I think she's going to make a movie. Cool. I'm really glad that she's not making the Black Panther. Movie. Me too. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Like smart. Yes. There's something. There's something just inherently so insulting about people being like, wait, why wouldn't you want that job? Like it's a Marvel movie. It's like n- no. no, some people it's don't. A, that's a tough. Use that as a measure of success. <laughs> and like, it's, it's same goes for Star Wars too. If she yeah. totally didn't want to do a Star Wars movie, that'd be cool. Like, right. But I feel like a Star Wars spinoff, one of these like yeah, quote unquote yeah. Star Wars stories movies, mm-hmm. could give her a lot more freedom than any Marvel movie would. You Marvel know, Marvel movies are the toughest, and like yeah, yeah, because yeah, they all have to line up with each other perfectly. But if Ava DuVernay had an idea for like, here's a thing set in the Star Wars universe, obviously Disney's going to be micromanaging to a degree right. because it costs a lot of money, but mm-hmm. it also like it wouldn't have the ability to uh, crumble the entire house of cards if it yeah, didn't I work. 
So she could do whatever her. Well, who do you want, Emily? Who's your pick? I don't know. I was just trying to think because I hadn't actually thought about it. Beside the fact that I don't want. Um... I mean, I just try to think of directors I like who I've seen like sort of work on a big scale or whatever and yeah. enjoyed their work. Brad Bird's always the one that comes to mind, but there oh, are others. I have to change my choice actually. Right. Walt Becker. No, because you haven't seen Road Trip yet, have you? I haven't seen Alvin Road and the Ship? Chipmunks for the Road this Trip. This guy, I'm telling you, is no tour. He repeats the same themes. There's a thematic <laughs> he's, he's kidding, obsession Emily. with people getting hit in the testicles. <laughs> the films are constantly a comedy of manners of people being misidentified <laughs> as other things. In the old dogs, they're dads, but people think they're grandpas. Sure, now they're Alvin the Chipmunks, dogs, everyone right. thinks they're rats. Um, what else does he like? People being mean, human <laughs> ugliness. Who would be good? It's hard. Um, you know what looks bad? Go ahead. Uh, Star Trek Beyond. Looks like a bummer. I looks, think it looks fine. And I, I, I was really otherwise I would be like because I love Justin, Justin Lin. Lin. Yeah, yeah, I love but, Justin Lin. Yeah. That guy bats a thousand for me. Yeah. Oh, the new X Men looks good. No, it looks mm, terrible. No. no. But do you like it because it has a big guy? Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> like, wait, wait. Do you like it because Apocalypse is big? <laughs> yeah. Ben, Ben, come on. Ben, I agree with you. Ben, I agree with you. I think it looks fun. It looks like cool. Looks cool. I like the eighties. Bad There's guy. a big bad guy in it. And him. it's Oscar Isaac who played Poe Dameron Wait, ben, in this movie. No way. Yeah, man. We, ben, we should talk about <laughs> yeah, bro. Snoke. We should talk about Snoke. Wait. We yeah, should okay, talk we about got Snoke. You have a notebook full of ideas. Ben has Snoke a notebook. Snoke is the worst. This Snoke? is called Ben Snow Corner. All right. We're going to... Ben Snow Corner? Ben so, Snow Corner. Yes. No snoking. <laughs> I've been saying Emily, five for a while points. All right. that I really want a big... Like Jedi or bad guy character because I'm tired of these little guys. And he means big. He means I'm, like I'm big, big inside. Because it's like the lesson <laughs> is like don't underestimate the little guy. Fuck. That. How, how long? How long have you been waiting for this? A I, long time. At least <laughs> two and a half months. For a while. I've and, been and I'll, very vocal. About I'll it. say this, Emily. Every time he brings the subject up, he words it exactly the same way. <laughs> like it's a recording. Like he's taking out a tape. And yet every time I find it funnier than the last time. He wait, has not changed the wait. meter in which he says it. All it's right. the exact same complaint. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go on his side for a second, just sure. because uh I think I think it is one of these uh these, you know. Uh, sci-fi tropes that everybody is roughly humanoid shaped even avatar 12 feet is not mm-hmm. that much different no right they're basically mm-hmm. basketball players compared yeah. Yeah. To, yeah 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 uh so somebody who is on a massively different scale but i would also say the micros- uh, microscopic like yeah well i have you ever read the bruce coville alien books which i was obsessed with when no, i was a kid no. One of the cool thing about that is like that the Alien in My Breakfast era? Alien yeah. Aliens Ate My Homework oh, yeah, 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 my secrets yeah. and Dimension X yeah. they're the greatest books ever you should yeah. read the, all four of them they're amazing and one of the things, you know, in the first book, they're tiny when they meet him. And, like, because they've been shrunk to a microscopic size. Like, not, like, like they're, like, two inches tall. Uh-huh. And they keep talking around the fact, like, what size they actually are. Uh-huh. And in the second book, you realize that they come up to, like, your waist. Uh-huh. Cool. And, like, that is, and, like, that's, the, and they're, like, yeah, this is, most people are this size, but humans are just really tall. Like, and that's, like, one of the many brilliant things in those books. That's very That just, like, I had never thought about before. And this, those books also have Gracker, who's the lead alien character, says that he's from a swamp. And the kid's like, oh, you're from a swamp planet? And he's like, no. I'm like, my planet had a swamp. Like, what do you mean swamp planet? Like, and it's dispelling yeah. that yeah. sort of Star Wars, which yeah. we've talked about. The one oh, yeah. environment the, the planet. One environment have multiple planet. ecosystems within one planet. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, back to Snoke. Ben Snoke, Snoke Corner. Corner. Yes. <laughs> so, um, he's not really that big, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a... It's just a, it's just a projection. <laughs> yeah. So do you feel well, it's unknown. His size kinda. is unknown. He could That's be true. big. He you could know, be kind of could big. could be tiny. But it, I, I'm, I feel like it's just a projection. You think it's just okay, a ripoff? Can he's I throw a what big. if out to you? Yeah. So I said this when you were out of the room setting up the levels. <laughs> no, I said this, this to Emily and David. If. You might like this, okay? Mm-hmm. So let's keep the hope alive. Because right now it's a classic JJ mystery box. We don't know until we open it what size he actually is, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you go, oh, the hologram's big. He's probably a small guy and the hologram's deceptively big, right? But let's look at the visual language of Star Wars. In every Star Wars movie we've seen so far, the hologram's itty bitty. Not it's I mean, like four to six they, inches. Well, sometimes they have a regular size hologram, but they've had many a small. They've I'd had little palm hologram. Yes. ones. I'd say but, I've yeah. never seen a hologram because the biggest one I can remember is the one. Um, they have a life size, two scale. The, they have two scale. Uh, yeah, and there's the ones where they're sitting in the chairs, and some people sure. are mm-hmm. sitting in yeah. chairs which elsewhere, which is great. Now you can do that, and like you can actually teleconference that and have like. Yeah. That's that's actually <laughs> honestly pretty cool. A lot of the holograms. I'll correct my statement. A lot of the holograms yeah, are minus, very small, right. pocket-sized in the palm. Yeah, there's that one like where Obi Wan is like, "I'm on a clone planet," yeah. and he's like uh, really tiny. I, think I know where you're going with this, though. So you're saying that maybe he's even bigger 
They're right. in the hologram. So if we go, oh man, the holograms are one tenth the size of the person. Of oh, We're seeing shit, Snoke. Dude. That's the biggest they can yeah. fit in that room. Maybe he's like the size of a pyramid. Like he's that big. Wow. Oh, that would be so cool. What if like it turns out that Star Killer <laughs> Base is genuinely... made his day? Yeah. Ben, what you if it turns out that they're shooting him down about X Men Apocalypse, yeah. which I feel a little bad about? It looks no, fun, okay. Ben. Yeah. It looks fun. What? <laughs> what if? It looks like a lot of fun. We're going to see it together. Real We're going to have a great time. I'll see it. We're, you're not invited. <laughs> ben and I are best friends now. Um, what if Starkiller Base isn't a base that they built with machinery, but it's Snoke's motherfucking eyeball? He's got laser eyes. And so they it just popped one of his eyes out. Yeah. I was going to say, what though, about you, the Emily, planet. Yeah. What did you think about that, that it turns into a sun? Oh, I, I actually like that. I thought I that too. was super like that. cool. I yeah. Because it's like you were expecting the Death the Star explosion, explosion to happen mm-hmm. again, because here was the Death Star, basically, again. Yeah. And then, yeah, it like it's kind of a cool... It's like, actually it's a, a little, it's little more positive. It's not just the Death Star again, though. It's even bigger. Yeah. Ben, no, <laughs> but Ben's right, like, though. you must have liked that. Just Did saying. you like the thing where they're like, here's the Death Star. Here's Starkiller Base. I fucking love that shit. Of course. Can't just come back with the same old shit. It's gotta be bigger. <laughs> ben, what did you think of Maz Kaneda? Who's that? Uh, Thousand year old alien bartender played by Lipton Very tiny. Oh. Very tiny. Very small. Well, I mean, she was small, but she had a lot of wisdom. That's right. Okay. And she also could deal big with guys. That, the guys. Big eyes. And she yeah. could deal with the, the, that rough crowd. Yeah. And who did she have a crush on? Chewy. Who is? Big. A big hairy guy. She called him my boyfriend. My boyfriend. Yeah. And he's like seven foot one. It's the best. It's one of the best lines. It's just yeah. yeah. Is that 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 is not given any further explanation? Oh, yeah. That she's that's just how she addresses. <laughs> and his body it's language like, is kind of a million like... fanfare. <laughs> just yeah, yeah. explode. <laughs> Do you think they hooked up once and he like totally? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think of Chewie as this like family man who for some reason oh, right. goes we, on yes. adventures. Oh, yeah. we, we forgot did that, watch that the is canon. Yeah, yeah. That is he canon. is married. Of course. No, he's got yeah. a family. What's 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 his um. What's his son's name? His, his son is Lumpy. Lumpy. His father is Itchy. Itchy. I do not remember his wife's name. His wife is Mala, and she Mala. looks like Chewbacca, but she wears an apron because she's a lady. <laughs> but so, so have we? Ta- have we? Ta- have you guys talked about the names yet? Because I feel like I talked about this when I reviewed the Star Wars Holiday Special for AV Club way back when. Me and Emily uh, are a- AV Club. Yeah, for life. long time you know, ago, back, yeah. galaxy far, far away. Um, called the AV Club. So Itchy and Lumpy are supposedly they are they are adjectives that end in an e sound like chewy. Sure. But are they short for Ichaka <laughs> yes. and Lumbaka? Yes. Okay. Wikipedia listings. <laughs> yes. Really? I looked this up. I forgot to mention this when we did the holiday special. <laughs> yes. No. Their names are like Ichikana. Oh wow. And like That's Lumpacora crazy. I'm or whatever. This up yeah. now. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's a no. It's a Lumpararu. Lumpararu. <laughs> God damn it. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, a real bummer. Wait, who was where, who was I talking to about the holiday special where where George so Lucas weird. was not really privy to anything that was going on with it and like drove over in the middle. I of I was the talking broadcast. to you about that. Yes. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, literally uh, in the uh, middle of the broadcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, so on the planet. Okay, Ben's uh, no bar planet. Yeah, uh, uh, Taco Donna, Taco Bell. Ben's looking at notebook. He came in loaded with notes today. Uh, there's a really fun moment. I think it's at this point where uh, Han gets Chewie's gun and he shoots it. And oh he's yeah, the, like, the bowcaster. This is cool. Yeah. yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was so unnecessary. I don't know who that is. is that Who's that a wink to? Has what somebody is? always written a fanfic where he totally. got to, to shoot with the crossbow thing? Yeah. Like, because yeah. here's the thing: like Chewie has always had that thing. Yeah, yeah. But you like almost never see him use it. Like very rarely, and it never seemed any different. It yeah. just like the bowcaster. He rarely fires. I also don't yeah. understand why it looks like that. It's just it doesn't make any sense. The bullets it, it, are held in the side balls. Like, is it supposed to be a primitive kind of gun? Like, it's a crossbow, I mean, it's but it's very it still clearly a someone laser. was just I like. I guess you can clonk somebody with you can it. Clonk someone yeah. with yeah. it. Clonk but I mean, it's obviously some designer for like Empire Strikes Back or whatever was like, I don't know, it can be like a crossbow. That's cool, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, but I like that in this movie, they're like, well, no. The thing is, it's more powerful. It can like make a bigger blast yeah. thing and it blasts people I know who the... likes that <laughs> right over here right next to you Big fan. Uh-huh. birthday Benny <laughs> oh, yeah, birthday Benny. yeah. Uh, anyway uh, any other notes ben? I okay yeah well I'm gonna wrap this up <laughs> yeah, no, um, go ahead. Okay. I love seeing Ben be this excited it's Ben's fun. grinning it's very yeah. funny we, ha- we made Ben listen to 30 episodes of us talking about the prequels 30, just, just to be clear like Th- or, yeah, 32, yeah. maybe. Yeah. A lot. Know. It was yeah. ridiculous. Ben hates them. He also hated Robert Downey Jr.'s The Judge. <laughs> Which we also did a one-off finish. episode. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh my and then we Lord. did an episode on the three Fantastic Four movies, and he didn't even watch them. <laughs> no, didn't even bother. Yeah. But he likes um, this movie. Yeah. It was great. Great. And you saw it with your pops, right? Mm-hmm. Pops Hosley? Did just, he like Just it? you and Dad? Just me and Dad. Cool. He was into it. He's a tough sell. 
He's really? A, he's like a hardcore science fiction reader. Oh, okay. Oh. And so he was kind of just like, meh, I'm done with the whole trope kind of stuff. I Not want, hard enough for him. I want Are you guys more okay? interesting different worlds. Are you guys okay accepting that Star Wars is not sci-fi, though? Oh, totally. No, it's, it's a fantasy, fantasy movie. All right. Right. Yeah, it's a fantasy yeah. movie in space. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. Um, yeah. I, I think people who try to evaluate it on that level are, are asking for... Yeah, what, strife what, what, a, what a miserable life you're yeah. leading. Yeah, tell your dad he lives a miserable life. <laughs> I, I saw this movie with my the third, <laughs> the third time I saw this ben movie, Griffin I saw Hamlet. it with my mom, <laughs> and it was the second Star Wars movie she'd ever seen, and the first Star Wars movie she saw was Revenge of the Sith when she came to our live show. Weird. Which doesn't really count, right. because yeah. she didn't really watch the movie. And let's let's mention, because this is a big update since the last time we recorded, your mom has framed the poster from our she live did. show. She did. It's hanging Aww. on my wall. That's she framed awesome. it. It is. It's, it's very Photoshop nice. Of David it was a Christmas present. For me. It's Anakin and Obi-Wan. I know. It's hanging on oh my, my wall now. She framed it for me. I mean, she was like, it's just a target frame. Like, she was trying to, but, you know, it was nice. Oh, man, that reminds me of, like, this is another pre-episode one activity. Ooh. So was... you were about my age, right? You were about 12 or yeah, so. Uh, yeah, 13. 13, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, had very, very rudimentary uh, Photoshop availability. Um, sure. Definitely took Polaroid pictures and... Uh, in front of like what I thought was like a green screen, and tried to drop myself into wow. pictures Whoa. Of, wow. from Star Wars. So you took Polaroid pictures in front of a green screen, and you scanned these into your computer. Yeah, I had a yes. scanner, wow. and then tried to and the, yeah, I tried to trim out the background. That and is awesome. The lighting, like this is my first foray into uh, photo, Photoshop. Remember when you just had Photoshop, and you were just sort of like, "Well, what does this button do?" You uh-huh. know, like, "Let's see what let's see what all this uh-huh. does." I just yeah. make everyone bald. That's what I would do. I thought that was funny. <laughs> Cut off their hair. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I love Photoshop. Um, ben, any any more notes? You're just um, well, uh, I don't like the calamari dude. Akbar? Yeah, you're not He's into Akbar. Right. He's a good guy. It's just well, whatever. We're He's not gonna head. get into it. He does have a big head. He does have a big head, <laughs> and he hates traps. Ben, you also hate traps. <laughs> that, if there's one thing you know about me: anti trap. What's like his traps. line though in this one? What does he say? Um, like you know. Oh, firepower! It'll be shielded from our firepower. Uh-huh. I'm doing I'm yeah. doing his flipper hand uh-huh. with with my left hand right now. I honestly I I missed his lines. His yeah, lines. you were just going like yes, yes, and yeah. I was like, shut up, Griffin. Yeah, I couldn't. That stop. was after you'd interrupted me to tell me that Ken Lung was in the movie when I already was could so see excited. him. He was there. No, but at that point he was out of focus. I went, is, is that Ken Lung? Is, is that, that Ken Lung? You were like, I don't guy? know, Griffin. No, he, Ken Lung is. I mean, N- Nyum Nyum is the ear guy. Ken yeah. Lung is just an actor. He, was very, he played Miles on Lost. Yeah, he's a great actor. Oh. He plays like one Lung? of the guys in that know, control I room. Watch, uh, I didn't watch <laughs> Lost. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, I love Nyum Nyum. Nyum Nyum. Nyum Nyum. Oh one. yes, yes, yes! Yeah. I like him. Oh yeah, he's he in that great. one episode yeah. of The Sopranos. Real good mm-hmm. episode. But mm-hmm. I, was um, all, I was also happy to see that ear dude. Yeah, he's back. Hell yeah. <laughs> is that the same guy? <laughs> it's the same guy. Is it really? They got the same guy. I thought it was just a different um a different Not only species. is it the same guy, it's the same actor. Really? For Akbar too, they got the same actor. The same voice actor. Well, yeah, yeah he's like ninety two. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, come on. Do you want to know something like really sad about representation in movies? Yes. Go ahead. Is that like I thought that Nyan was Japanese when I was a kid. I'm half Japanese. Oh, wow. And so I really liked him a lot because I was like, Oh, it's the Japanese person. <laughs> Wait, wow. Did you it's literally Did you just think he is Japanese or did you think like this is kind of a stand in for a Japanese character? I, I don't know what I thought exactly. <laughs> but but you I was just like, that was, was your like, mindset. That's yeah, that's there, the one that's like me. You thought he was from his planet's the, Japan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> on a planet where his species was dominant, he was from that planet's there's Japan. One, I think there's one Asian pilot in Return of the Jedi. I, nothing more than that is is, but there's in one Return guy who dies. Jedi. Yeah, yeah. You know, among in the sort of uh, the wedge no, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, battle yeah. group. He does. Like, he has ah! a screaming death. He, yes, he, he has goes, a screaming ah! death. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, then there's he's in a Y wing. There's awesome. one in this. There's an Asian woman. We were pilot. talking about how much we love B wings. Yes. Me and you, oh, big yeah. B wing fans. B-wing. There's no B wings in this movie. Star That's... Wars Rebels, which is the Disney XD animated show that I watch, had Great a whole B wing episode recently mm. about like the construction of the B wings. Oh, yeah. that's for <laughs> it's me. Kind of a cool episode. Yeah, I like B wings and I like the Slave One. I think I like vertical ships because I just like to think outside the box. Yeah, they're weird. they're different. Yeah. They're different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is cool. Um, yeah, <laughs> the B wings are cool. Hey, you know what I like? Shoot. I like Star Wars. Great. <laughs> Love Star Wars. Like, I spent like three weeks like weighing all these things oh, and thinking about my gripes and whatever. But now when you're talking about it, it's like, oh my God, so a movie where people go in spaceships and they hug each other and they fight and they kiss <laughs> and they hang out. They don't really and kiss. They kiss. Who kisses? Who kisses? Han and Leia. 
Oh, not in this no, one. No, they hug. Oh, I'm they not, I'm not saying this movie yeah. specifically. I'm saying Star Wars The Saga has kissing in it. There's a little bit of kissing. It oh. happens enough. I just want to... I don't, I don't like movies with no kissing. When I was a kid, I was like not into the kissing. Always a fan of kissing. Very, I'll brag about that. about that. I was a fan of kissing from like day Unless one. They were married. Unless they were married. I like thought Val that when you kissed Cole your Kidman bride was Favre. the first time you kissed your bride. Like the first time you were kissing the person. See, I think I think that's that has that's very interesting because the movies that that girls are into at that age are very like a kiss is the thing that happens and then you get married, but you right. do it when you're not married. You do. Like, there's one. Right. Like, that's yeah, how yeah, you yeah. tell that you're going to get married to somebody. For some, I guess I thought like that was why they made such a big deal about it in the wedding. Like you can kiss the bride, where it's like you can yeah. now kiss the bride. Like, Fine, they, like yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh, any any other? Okay, one last thing. Oh, one last thing. Okay. All right. Okay. So, what's the? Um, it looks like Hoth, but it's a, not it's the Star Killer Star base. Killer base. Star, Star Killer, Killer base. base. All right. So, Grinning from ear to ear, Ben. I'm just gonna say, me. I feel like they could have made some changes, right? Okay. A lot of changes with this movie. Constructive criticism. You know? Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, we me personally, I, I don't think it should always be a good versus evil kind of thing. I think there should be, like, a lot of different players mm, involved. You got some true detective in Make your show. Make it like a real oh, like, yeah. Maybe some, like, scenario. drone shots well, of Well, that's Coruscant? what we're saying. We want the Underworld show. Shades of Grey. You want yeah. Shades of Grey, Nobody likes my drone shots yeah. of Coruscant yeah. jokes. It's a great true detective joke. So you, you want to see some third parties coming in. I just, that's just one suggestion, okay? Yeah. But here, this is the thing I feel very passionate about. Okay. In particular, the, the Star Killer planet. I've seen a snow planet before. Mm -hmm. I want to see a rain planet. Ah, well, Camino is uh, the Camino. rain planet. Yeah. Remember uh, Camino? Remember Camino much? No, I don't. Uh, it's in the second movie. It's the one where he has the fight with Django Fett. Clone it's planet. just raining It's outside. water world if it was raining all the time. It's like mm -hmm. all water. I actually kind of like Camino a lot. Camino gives me the creeps. Um, the Camino's weird. Yeah. Well, and the it's people like, who live there look, right. look scary. Ben, ben, I still love Oh, you, you think the, Cam the we'll Camino the Camino are know. scary? Yeah. I, I'm, the weird long like neck. Yeah. I think it looks fun. Like I like 80s cool. as a fashion aesthetic. Yeah. It's got a great cast that right. built up. Good Wait, team what are you players. guys talking yeah, about? Yeah, what are you guys talking we're, about? We went off on that. Are you talking about the fucking X-Men movie? So anyway. No, we're not. No, we're not. Let Ben and I be friends. You guys can be friends. Cool. X-Men. Love it. Great. I don't care about this new movie. I like We all love Femke Hansen. Love Ooh, Fem Femke Janssen. Femke Janssen. Femke Janssen. Um, Femke Janssen. I like the first two X Men movies. Yeah, um, agreed. I like First Class. I like First Class. Okay, I think it's good. I like it a lot. A Days of Future Past. I don't remember it all, but I remember it had a couple things it's in bad. it. It's had, bad. Had it's had fun bad. while watching it. Yeah. No, I, it's a bummer though. It, the, the, yeah, it's it's a bummer. There's like the so many characters have nothing to do in that movie. Right, and the whole yeah. movie is them just like fixing Brett Ratner's movie. Which mm -hmm. it's funny that it they needed a whole movie to undo Brett Ratner's movie. Yeah, like, that yeah. is amusing. Yeah. That amuses David Sims right over here. But still, <laughs> uh, it's not really worthy of. Yeah, Art, go ahead. But I think we should wrap this up. So I just want to finish my point. Yeah. All right. Listen. All right. So there's a rain planet. But anyway, what I wanted to see. <laughs> Well, I want to see the animated the series that we watched. Uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, the Jenny Tartakovsky. Do you remember Clone that Wars. that that fight the scene stomper. with the rain? Oh, with the rain. Oh, oh, the one with Anakin and Asajj Ventress on oh, top yeah, of sure, it. Yeah, sure. that was really cool. So, what I wanted to see at the end was a good wet fight scene. <laughs> This is another one of Ben's sticky. Yeah, point. he likes things so that are ben, wet. Fight. Ben created three. <laughs> wet fight. Wet fight. Ben created three original characters Look, for Star Wars, a, a, right? A, a wet fight scene would be cool because they could like fizz off of the lightsaber. It could be like oh, yeah. when well, you they have did a that. That happened with the snow. That's what happened in the oh, happened with the snow, which was cool. Which is but not really, enough. Really if the water's cool. happening. What all do you guys time? think of the lightsaber fight? Cool. I liked it. I think it's better every it's time intense. I see it. It's yeah. pretty intense. Yeah. And I like that it's kind of raw because obviously one half doesn't know how to do anything anyway. Like they're just sort of and the other, like, made this janky-ass lightsaber. He made a like, weird lightsaber. He's been shot in the side, and yeah. he keeps whacking himself. Yeah. Which, which me and Griffin were into when we were That's very it. Adam Driver. That very is a Adam very Driver. Adam Driver uh, little bit of detail there. But that's, like, a real actor moment that we didn't get at all in the prequels. Oh, that's, yeah. like, an actor making a choice. That is the biggest, that is the single biggest difference between the prequels and this, and camera work. Well, oh, camera work and acting. Yes. The acting is actually somewhat human. In, right. this, in these movies. I'd say it's very human in this movie. Yeah. Agreed. And Emily, that is a perfect transition to what I think will be the final segment on this episode. Mm -hmm. This was a really loose, unstructured episode, but I, I think <laughs> this is fun. I think it's a fun talk. I don't know. Do you guys do you have a fun talk, Emily? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like there are five things that I five points I never got to make, make but the I don't points. I don't remember what they are no, now. No, no, come on, let's keep making points. We might have to do the Force Reawakens Reawakens. <laughs> 
Oh, um, the did you see somebody Twitter. somebody on like I want to say slash film today sure. that I could be wrong? Oh, he was saying when does when the Force exactly awaken? Does the Force oh, awaken? He was trying to pinpoint it. You know what? I didn't even finish that article. I was uh, like, oh, yeah. good headline. And I, yeah. I read one paragraph into it. I was like, I bet I could think about this. I'd rather I'll eat say a that fart is, than that read is that one thing that. <gasps> Boom. <laughs> no, I'd that rather is... eat a fart, David. <laughs> wow. Uh, um, <laughs> that is one thing that annoyed me in the initial wave of like, why is me so good at stuff? And like, where it's like, it's called The Force Awakens. The whole idea is that people are suddenly kind of like, because yeah. Finn yeah. snaps out of it, you know, like, mm-hmm. and that's sort of unexplained. But the idea is like, shit's suddenly happening again. Yeah. And that's like why everyone's like, well, why is R2 in sleep mode? Then he wakes up. Because it's, it's time to wake up. The, the R2 needs to awaken. Yeah, they're waking up. Everyone's I, waking up. I don't up. like that part. I have no called, problem with the What if it was called Star Wars? R2 D2 Awakens. That'd be great if it was called Star Wars R2 D2 Awakens. David, hit Awakens. me. I hit you with two of my fingers. <laughs> you big finger. Do you need Do you need R2 D2 and C3PO in the movies anymore at this point? I enjoyed the 3PO, like the two minutes of 3PO. I, I, I enjoy him, and I liked that he was into his red arm, like, you know, like and very, very into kind of explaining, but not explaining it. No, I w- didn't want it explained at all. I just wanted I him to say, like, I don't care. No, I just like that he was like, oh, you probably the, didn't notice me because of the red arm. That just amuses me. Yeah, yeah. That he thinks anyone would care. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I need them in the movies. Because BB-8 in the movies. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, no, I feel the same way. I mean, I love them. Absolutely. Sure. Zero knocks to see 3 on R2-D2. Like, took me through a lot of important moments in my childhood. Mm-hmm. But BB-8 is great. BB-8 got this. BB-8 really got this. Um, where is BB? Where is BB-8 when the movie ends? Because R2 goes with... He's on the ship with Ray. He's oh, yeah, on the ship yeah. with Ray? Okay, okay. Ray, Just double Ray Chewie, BB-8. and BB-8. Yeah. Basically the three best characters. Yeah, it's arguable, yeah. <laughs> I mean, best friends. So where is R2? He's just still back at... I think he's back the, with Leia. The, the, for, okay. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I like the idea that 3PO just chills with Leia, you know? Mm-hmm. That it's kind of like an old dog that sort of just yeah. stays yes. with its master, you it's know? The old robot butler. Yeah. That he's just like, can I help? And she's always sort of like, yeah, you know, sure. If it like, makes you feel <laughs> useful, yeah, go for it. Oh, I remember the rain planet was the clone planet. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> you go. Okay, so final uh-huh. segment. Final segment. Wait, wait, wait. Are there any other points, Emily, rattling around in your head? No, I can't think of anything. I'm sorry. No, I... it's okay. Just want, I just want to give you, you know, I... fair ground. You like the movie. I did. I I mean, I did. Uh <laughs> I just I I think the repetition stuff is is the sort of Yeah, it's the, it it, it the I motifs. don't know that I will see it again because of that. Like that in the theaters this round. Although I do want to see a better projection of it cuz because the last one I saw was in 3D without matting on it, and I almost like lost my shit at this poor little mall and Emily Federal Emily complained Washington. to a projectionist at her. I am one of those wow. people. I, I, know, I know I do what that happens too. Yeah. to me. I just yeah. I think it's because it's not even that the movie is expensive anymore. It's like it's like this is my time. This is well. It's it's not about me. It's about the art of movies. Yeah. Like I want Hell's people yeah. to do it right, and Hell's I want yeah. people to see the movies. The way that they were made to be seen, and like, I, and oftentimes that you already have a big knock going against you because it's in digital. But then to not even mat it correctly, I mean, come on. I'm sorry. I like. I got very heated. I mean, I. You're I a think hero. You're, you did the right yeah, thing. Yeah, you're. I it's the, all green lights in this studio right now. Yeah. We, we we're totally on your side here. The, um, the worst one was when I complained about sound in American Hustle. Like you complained about sound in American mm-hmm. Hustle. What what was happening to the it was sound just, in American Hustle? It was Hustle. just not. It was not loud. At all. Well, that is annoying. But then, of course, <laughs> did you complain? Yeah, anyway. American Hustle is a piece of shit. I had to get on to our last segment because I uh, am late for a rehearsal that's literally next door within the same complex that we are in right now. Um, I have to pick up a side table. Where are you picking it up? Uh, whatever the neighborhood is. It's like south of Park Slope. I don't know my way around this sure. South again. Slope? Like uh, Greenwood Heights? Or, yeah, uh, Greenwood Sunset Heights. Park, but probably Greenwood Heights. Yeah. Uh, sure. Final segment. Two of the things uh, are regular... That we do on this show. Oh, we have to do a performance review. That's what we're going to do. Yes. We're going to go through and also talk about the billing order. So I'm just going to go through on the poster, okay? No, I, I got the billing order. I want to do it with, do you, is it the same as the poster order? Go right ahead. I just want to do this because this is this is the way it's credited in the end credits, you know, just because I think it's interesting. The billing order is crazy in this movie. Right, okay. Yeah, you, so, Emily is looking at us like we're just like. You mean in the, the end credits? Yeah, yes. the end credits. So the yeah. performance okay. review we do is we go through the actors. We're going to go through just, just the actors. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Solo card billing in the end credits. Okay. We're listed on the poster. Okay. This is the order they're billed in. We're going to discuss very quickly, quick takes on whether or not that billing order is just, 
but also you give a thumbs up. It's Hollywood politics, man. That's what we're fucking talking <laughs> it's, about it's here. It's intense. It's intense. Pulling back the curtain, okay. you know? Okay. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Pass, fail on each performance. The, whether or the not billing like order it. is salary order. You're, I'm almost certain. 100%. Right. Yeah. Okay. First build, Harrison Ford. Pass. I mean, thumbs up. Great performance. Thumbs so up. So much better than he needed to be also. Yeah. yeah. Really, I think he brought it. I was very satisfied. You could call this movie Star Wars The Ford Awakens because for the first time he wasn't snoozing on camera. For the first time in Star Wars? In, in like 15 years. I think he's very good in Morning Glory also. Okay, I think he should have been nominated All right, let's for move that. on. Next one. Okay. Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. Second, Second build. build. Mark Hamill. I like his face. Make he's, The faces he makes. Uh, so for our listeners, I, I, Mark Hamill played Luke Skywalker. <laughs> I uh, I mean, not enough information, not enough to evaluate. I, I like the face he made. I think it's some really good. Face I like acting. this. Oh yeah, yeah, his hair looks so good. Yeah, good no, not hair. his hair. No, he does she's his movement. The, the movement was great, but also his hair looks <laughs> really. Good. Emily, for the listeners, is mimicking him dropping yeah. his hood. He does a very dramatic. Yes. Like I like to do this now because I have a very big hood on my. He like head peels head. Like, it off. Peel of his it head. off. Drop the hands. And it doesn't down. even touch his hair. Yeah. Like somehow, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, uh, Carrie Fisher is Princess Leia. Well, wait, let's talk about. I just want to quickly say, so Harrison Ford apparently got twenty million dollars for the sure, movie, yeah, yeah. Right. and I think Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher each got like they five said like three or, or five. Yeah, yeah. Mark Hamill got five million dollars to drop a hood. Good job, buddy. go get it, Mark. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. that's cool. He's also yeah. gonna have a lot to do in the next movie. Obviously, I mean they paid him to ensure that yeah. he stayed yeah, in the next yeah. movies. But yeah, nice day of work if you can get it. Carrie Fisher, third build, mm-hmm. Princess Leia, massive thumbs up. Yeah, I loved her. Yeah, she's good. She's yeah. good. And also, for someone who doesn't act much, really nice. Yeah, she hasn't done, like, a non-cameo. She's on like... um, this Bravo show. Isn't I? Yes. Uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure she's on uh, A Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce. Oh, good show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She is. Yeah, no, she's definitely in that. I saw the pilot of that. Okay, so what they call the legacy players are billed first, right? And that's part of their sure. contract stipulation. They Fine. get paid more. They were like the first announced, too. Right. right. So Ford, Hamill, Fisher. Yes, it should Not be Matt. Ford, Fisher, Hamill, whatever. Fourth build, Adam Driver. Uh, for, yeah, Adam Driver, fourth build. Interesting uh, billing order. Great performance, I think. I give him agree, a major right? thumbs up. I major don't know how yeah, it really no, feels. No, he's good. He's good. I don't know about that billing order, but whatever. I think it's a salary thing. I'm, I guess I'm, is he's I'm paid more. I'm interested, though, that, 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 that Oscar Isaac didn't get paid more. I know. I guess he, this is what I read. I read that the only people who got in the millions were the three legacy actors, that Driver and Isaac got, like, between 500000 and a million, mm. like, hmm. between three hundred and six hundred thousand, I think as, like, more established actors, and that uh, Boyega and Daisy Ridley got, like, $100,000 each. But, but, I mean, it'll balloon, right? That's the yes. whole thing. They, yes, they with bonuses, and they get to make contracts. the other ones. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Daisy Ridley is Ray. I mean, great. Should be first Thumbs bill. Up. She's the lead of the movie. Sure. Mm-hmm. But even if you're going to put the legacy players first, she should be next out of, after Adam Driver. It's true. But, like, a star-making performance. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else? She's been in one other movie or something? She yeah. hasn't been in a movie. Not even. Oh. She was in one films, TV show. TV guest She spots. played like a corpse in a British TV show. Mr. Once. Selfridge, the Jeremy yes. Piven show. Oh, yes, that's right. And okay. has done short films. Uh, an amazing debut. Mm-hmm. Very curious to see if she goes on to like have a big career. I've read interviews with her recently where she said she wants to go back to college. She might just be a Star Wars actor. Daisy. I don't know. But uh, please call me if you want to get dinner. Um, <laughs> uh, John Boyega. What a guy. I think he's so wonderful. He's he is really, too. really wonderful. He also, I would say, is probably the MVP of the press tour. He's been oh, the, yeah. the, oh, he's such owning a, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Although Oscar It's Isaac almost a little much. It's getting into um, Aaron Paul territory a little <laughs> bit. Good call. Although he but, doesn't say yeah. bitch no. as much as Aaron no. Paul does. <laughs> That's no. a major, major plus. <laughs> but also, better to get in Aaron Paul territory than Piven territory. Piven's yeah. the king of, of going way too far. Yeah. Sure. Paul is like, it's starting to get annoying. Boyega's yeah. still charming. No, he's still, yeah. he's very, very safe right now. I'm just saying, like, another month of this, and I don't think there will be. But no, probably not. He'll probably dial it down. The, yeah, That's yeah. true. Yeah, maybe he'll do a whole China tour, because it yeah. opens in China. But I love Friday. that he went to go see it at, like, his local theater. and yes. was in the, oh. in Peckham. Oh, My friend shoot. went to go see it at 34th Street on the Saturday after and it he came was out. There. He was there. He just yeah. was going around he New York, around. like, going and being like, what he apparently walked in and was like, yo, I just saw that Chipmunks movie. <laughs> like, that was his opening joke for each theater. Um, It's a really good film, A Road Trip. You should all see it. It's very much of a piece. Oscar Isaac is Poe Dameron. Can I make one point about Boyega first? Oh, for Very sake. quick. My my former roommate, best friend, Sophie Fader, who listens to the podcast, you yeah. know, shout out to Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Uh, calls a John Boyega and Daisy Ridley. She refers to the characters solely as, I'm going to fuck this up. 
uh, Cutie Pie and Sweetie Heart, which I really Aww. like because she just thinks they're so adorable. They are very adorable. And we were, we saw it together and she's going to go, what about the part where Cutie Pie says to Sweetie Heart? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Cutie Pie and Sweetie Heart are great. Oscar Isaac. Yes. What a, what a guy. Everybody's great. Like, everybody's can we just great. say everybody's, everybody's really good in this great. movie? Yeah, is there, a, there's no thumbs job. down in this okay, movie. Okay, one performance that I am not crazy about. Would not oh, say I know is, what it is bad. I am I not it crazy is. about it. Lapita Nyong'o. Oh, oh I no, love her. no, I love her. We're I think totally she did a good job. Her. That's I, not who I thought you were talking about. Did you think it was Circus? No. Or did you think it was Max von Sydow? He doesn't like Circus. No, I thought it was Donald Gleeson. Oh, I liked him. I liked him mocking... The yeah. Star Wars. I just think villain. anybody could have played that part, and I don't know what he did to distinguish. So it. we're discussing all it's three fair. at once. Just make fair. it clear: it's Lupita Nyong'o, Andy Serkis, Domhnall Gleeson. Each of us have one performance. We're not crazy. Yeah, about. I'm not into Circus. Oh, I don't like Circus, and I don't. I, I'm I'm eh on Domhnall Gleeson. Big on Lupita, though. I think yeah, she did a good I job. wanted a, someone who sounded older. It just, no, I, I don't know if I'm being Lupita a stickler, is awesome but in that like, movie. Yeah. I think she's a great actress. Yeah. I just also wanted, sounded I older by human standards. She's like a thousand year old crazy little Bjork alien. You're right. I'm yeah. feeling pretty pwned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 totally. Uh, Circus, I think, is a good performance. I just hate. You the think it's design good? Of that character. He sucks. I do. I think nice. he's. Great. I fucking. Hate I like. Circus. I like that ham. I don't like Andy Circus. I like that family slice. How do you feel about Andy Circus? I think he's good as Gollum. Yeah, uh, Caesar, my guy Caesar. I haven't. I you know what? I've never seen any of those movies. Oh, you know I love what? Him so much. I I see him and I like him, and then they're just there's oh, no emotion. Ow. See, I I I felt very emotionally moved by the Gollum performance, by yeah. the Gollum character. So no, I, I like Gollum. I I like that. Character. The Return of the King has too much Gollum. That's the only. No, nah, I can't have too much Gollum. Right. Gollum's the well, best part. Go. Gollum's one of my favorite. <laughs> the Return of the King. A third of that movie is just them climbing up a mountain, and it's I whatever. I used to have sucks. a shelf in my bedroom that was just Gollum. I had like eighteen different Gollums. Um, no one's allowed it. A lot of <laughs> garbage. A lot of bullshit. Uh, Anthony Daniels next build. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I just his good, commitment. Good for him. You know, I was watching the Star Wars droids animated series, mm-hmm. which is cute. If you guys ever want to oh, watch yeah, it, which yeah, mocks the it. prequels. What, yeah, yeah. Right. Droid Tales, you're talking droid about. Tales, the Lego exactly. one. I turned you on to makes a lot of the jokes that we make. Yeah, I know. It's, I know. It's Maybe it was cribbing Group from this mind, podcast. Kind of mm-hmm. uh, but uh, yeah. Anthony Daniels, I think, is the only like Star Wars voice who actually like did the work to you know he, oh, really? he'll always be C three PO. Whose voice is Obi Wan in Clone Wars? It's whoever it is. His name. Yeah, he's a voice actor. He does a lot. Stuff. I'm forgetting his name now. Um, well, I'm finding it. I'm finding it. If I am not mistaken, I believe Anthony Daniels has never not played C3PO, including like commercials and stuff. Huh. Yeah, he, he he'll show up. And there was a New York Magazine profile on him that was really interesting that talked about how big his house was and whatever, and said that like he had tried getting some other parts after the original Star Wars, and then like since 1984 has done nothing but play C3PO in every incarnation. Wow, and owns like five houses. His name wow. is James Arnold Taylor, and he's just a voiceover actor. He's just mm. he was in Final Fantasy X. Oh, I didn't play that one. Uh, uh, next build, uh, Peter Mayhew. Little controversial because I think he's, he's also in, in the 13. Suit for like 10% of the movie. Index. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, there was Mayhew? an interview that came out today. Uh, with he basically didn't Mayhew's, do much work. like legs don't work anymore. Yeah, he's old. And so he's playing yeah, Chewbacca he's whenever Chewbacca is very tall and old. Sitting down. Yeah. And there's, well, there's another like guy a who did. a 6'11", like banker from Finland. Right. Who played a Chewbacca for the rest of the movie. Banker um, But uh, it's a nice it's a nice tip of the hat. Yeah. And... Mm-hmm. Max von Sydow. Yeah, he's. I like him actually. Who is anti Sydow? No, I'm not anti Sydow. For some reason, I thought you would be because you didn't love the character. He's one of the. He's a little distracting because you're like, whoa, Max von Sydow. Yeah, yeah, and then he's gone. (laughs) But uh, having when I watch it the sec because the the first time I was just like, "Mm." the second and third time, like he uh, he nails the scene with uh, Kylo Ren. Yes, he does. Good scene. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Where he's like uh, something far worse has happened to you. I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing a pretty good Max von Sydow. That's, pretty good. That's really good, yeah, actually. Pretty good. Um, I'll say two things. A uh, one, I heard a rumor that, that was originally written to be Wedge Antilles. Mm. That the and actor Jeremy Lawson Den- didn't want to do. It. He, Dennis, Dennis Lawson, Lawson sorry. was just. Uh, he said in an interview, like, I have no interest in doing right. that, which is interesting. He did all three original movies. Yeah. But he's um, isn't he you and McGregor's uh, McGregor's uncle? Yes, mm-hmm. uh-huh. yes he is. And he's um, also in the nice. superb BBC miniseries. He's the lead of the superb BBC miniseries Bleak House, which is the greatest Dickens adaptation ever committed to television. Is that it's the one with Gillian Anderson? With Gillian Anderson that was filmed in half-hour <clears throat> episodes that aired every single day like a soap opera. The mm. only time Dickens has been nailed because of that. Like, mm. it's supposed to be a That's serial. That's you should watch. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And he's the lead of it along with Gillian Anderson, and he's real good. New X-Files. 
The X Files. He's on the X Files. New X Files. Yeah. There's going to be new X Files. Oh, new X Files. Very This is a true fact. I, I think that uh, <laughs> I think that Max von Sydow is a little distracting in the film. I think he does an excellent job. Great job. Hearing the Wedge Antilles thing that makes a lot of sense because it feels like they just bring a character in with right. some sense of established yeah, yeah, yeah. history and relationship and then kill him off. Um, I would like for in future films, especially spinoff movies, if they're set in earlier times, to do young Laura Santeca stuff so we can sure. have more Whatever. of a relationship to that character. I also wish, this is just me being a stickler about Billing Order, but I know you're one of the few people who could relate to this. I if love Billing Order. If it had not been a well-known actor like Max von Sydow, mm. if it had been Dennis Lawson, who probably would have not commanded a and Go billing, on. they could have done a billing where it was Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Adam Driver, oh, Daisy Ridley, the and, and Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. Sure. Which, that's what he really deserves, is and Mark Hamill. Yeah, they were never going to bump him down that far. I think, That's yeah. a big, but what the he deserves, big, What he deserves is the rare featuring, to be honest. There should be a yeah. with Lupita. Special appearance and by. Max, and then special appearance or whatever, which the mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings movies would always bust out because they yeah. had too, right, many, right, right. They had too uh, many famous guys. Yeah, uh, I have to go to rehearsal <laughs> next door. Emily's got to go. I got to get this go. table. I've, I've I got nothing, go. but, you know. I, I want to do one thing. I... I, I feel like if we could end the episode this way, I'd like to announce what our next miniseries is. I oh, yeah, go right ahead. I think because we, we're really locked into it. We're locked I in. I think we might do one more one-off uh, Maybe. Next Maybe week. we should just dive in, We're though. debating, but yeah. but uh, we can formally announce now. Uh, uh, blank check, colon, with Griffin David, colon, will present our next miniseries, P-Cast Shyamalan. <laughs> Wait, what is it called? It's called P-Cast Shyamalan. No, it's not called that. But it's it is about P-Cast M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> Shyamalan. I've already started working on the Photoshop. It's locked in. It's called PCAST Shyamalan. It's going to be a 10 part miniseries yes. where we go through one by one the films of M. Night Shyamalan. Mm-hmm. And in our class of investigative style, hard hitting journalism, mm. we try to figure out is M. Night Shyamalan a good filmmaker? Sure. Is it possible he's a good filmmaker even if the majority of his films are bad? And maybe reassess whether all those films are bad. Yeah. So we're of them very are. fascinated by him. Uh, so PCAST Shyamalan, yeah. coming your way, maybe one off, maybe not. Emily, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for Emily, having me. Emily, it was a delight to have you it on the was podcast. So fun. Uh, anything you want to plug specifically? I don't know. Uh, I work at a website called TheVerge.com. I never write anything on it, but I have an. Uh, I don't know when this goes up, but I did a review of The Forest starring <gasps> Natalie Dormer. Japanese white people go to the Japanese suicide forest uh, movie. It is bad. Oh, that is not surprising. It's not a good movie. And now I've seen both of them. I've right, seen. Sea of I trees. saw Sea of Trees. Which one's better? Uh, Good I question. Guess. You were telling me how badly Sea of Trees got booed at Cannes. It Can got Festival. yeah, it got booed at like every single screening. <laughs> That's um, a Gus Van Sant pick. It is. Yeah, it is. it's um. So yeah, Forrester. Uh, I'd rather watch The Forest again if I, I had to pick one. Is The Forest like a tight like eighty five minute like sort short. of silly little yeah. thing? It's a it's a trifle. It's a trifle. Um, no, it's it's, it's 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 real bad. Um, uh, we'll yeah. read that review. Uh, follow mm. Emily on Twitter. Emily Yoshida. She's got a little. Boo I'm Avatar. All, I'm a little scared boo. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you that's know. my story. I'm sticking to it. And you have a podcast, sort of? I do. Um, oh, that's what Third I should GSD. actually plug. Yeah, uh, so I, I have a podcast that I, I host with the uh, Verge Science editor, Liz Lopato. It's called ESP, which stands for Entertainment and Science Podcast. Um, nice. And it has been on hiatus for the last month plus, but we are coming back with a vengeance next week, um, the 15th, I believe. And we were bi-weekly, but now we're going to be every week talking about um, weird science stuff and interesting art and entertainment stuff. So, yeah. Listen to that. Listen to all our other UCB Comedy Brethren podcasts. Yeah, baby. Rate, review, subscribe to those shows, but to our show as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you for listening. Mm-hmm. Uh, stay tuned. We're really excited about 2016. Oh, boy. we got a lot of stuff in store for you. Uh, and as always, okay. the official name of our next miniseries... I've legally trademarked it, is PCAST Shyamalan. Bye, folks. I'll cut that out.